Right, good afternoon, councillors. We're back and we're into it. So we have a motion and Angela is going to speak to it now. Thank you, Madam Chair. Look, um, today's decision is about supporting or not the public's wish, and the public's wish overwhelmingly support the master plan. Uh, the journey has been a long one, in particular for uh, me, because I was chair of the group, and uh, I was privileged to sit on that group with some um, external members of uh, high calibre indeed, and they were Professor Bruce Clarkson, um, we had Karen Fifield, who was the CEO of Wellington Zoo, and the president of the Zoo Association, and Kerry Goulter, who we were all familiar with, was the CE from the Waikato Tourism. And look, the journey's not over. We will battle this out when it comes to our 10-year plan budget, and you will be tested around the table on your priorities for Hamilton. Mine are about doing things better, and mine are about looking after what we've got and getting on with it. These visions that we're doing, and this is one of the last ones from the previous council, are about making a city a really great place to live in. It's as simple as that. Submitters have said we want this, and submitters have said we are happy to pay for this. The Hamilton Zoo lets our children and the future children have a wildlife experience that in normal everyday course of their life they possibly will never have. It teaches the importance of conservation and of looking after animals. And it gives families an opportunity to spend a fun day together in our city doing something other than visiting a shopping mall. And zoos are loved because they're pretty special places. They are magical places with magical animals. And yes, it is a sad reality that they are, that is through the lens of a con confined space, but, that's, but that has been created by us human beings. It's not a perfect world. This plan will deliver a new vision for our zoo, and I will repeat that submissions say the community wants and the community is prepared to pay for. It increases our efforts towards conservation and provides exceptional learning opportunities for our children for years to come. And also gives great uh, tourism and new revenue opportunities for the zoo as well. This plan is about our people. This plan is about the people that live in our city. The ratepayers have said we want it, we believe in it. It's about our children and it's about showing your cons constituents where your priorities lie. Let's not ignore, for the second time, public submissions and the majority of submissions which are to support this plan. We overlooked the public voice in the parking plan. I ask elected members, please don't do that with something so significantly important to our city, which is a zoological garden and something very special. So uh, I will obviously be supporting the motion. Thank you. Councillor, <coughs> Councillor Mallet. Sorry if you caught me mid nose blow. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> uh, thank you, Angela, and thank you, uh, uh, Paula. Um, Angela spoke very elo uh, eloquently and accurately at a couple of council meetings ago about councillors squandering what was at that time a one or two million dollar surplus that the council was looking to achieve um, by spending money and I think it was bringing forward the, um, some work on the, on the river plan. I could be wrong, but I think that's what was... Anyway, whatever it was, it was something. <clears throat> but it's, it was something, and it wasn't a core service, what I would have called a core service anyway. Um, free parking, thank you. It was the free parking thing, that's right. Not core service. Yeah, not core service, yeah. <laughs> um, and she was dead right. Uh, now I think uh, Angela's just been a pot calling the kettle black, I'm afraid. Um, and I know it's all about priorities, uh, and uh, I've been pretty clear where my priorities are, core services, 
um, so that people can have houses, people can have the, uh, the core services that are essential for the delivery of houses, the, del uh, the delivery of um, businesses, uh, generating prosperity and wealth throughout the whole community. Um, and it was an interesting thing that Angela talked about, Hamilton needs to be a great place to live in. Well, some of the people we represent don't have anywhere to live in because they don't have homes and they're struggling really hard to get onto the housing ladder. Um, and every dollar we spend to house animals is a dollar that we can't spend to house people. Um, and I've been pretty clear all my way through uh, on the council that I'm, I put people first, the people of our city first, and I don't see that this um, spend or any potential spend, which I remind you, councillors, has not been um, articulated or calculated yet. So we're, we're, we're moving into an area where we have no idea how much money we're going to have to spend. Um, and we have already heard that the, the uh, zoo is a long, long way from uh, washing its own face, i.e. covering its own costs. I can see no suggestion that any of the uh, anything that comes up in this uh, zoo plan will increase that ratio at all. So um, I'm standing behind the, uh, the residents and the employers of our city and trying very hard to reduce any rates increase that we're going to be facing, and I'm afraid I cannot support this plan going further. <clears throat> Thank you. Councillor Taylor. Paula, I'm, uh, I'm a zoo supporter. Uh, I may not look like it at times, but I am. Uh, I've been to the zoo many times over the years, uh, and I know firsthand how magical a place it can be. Uh, that is why I will vote today to approve the zoo master plan uh, and agree that various projects uh, should go into the 10-year plan. Uh, it's what happens next that worries me. And I think I've been clear that I'm concerned about where the dollars are going to come from. Um, Councillor O'Leary says that the journey isn't over yet. Um, in some respects, it hasn't even begun uh, because we haven't got dollar figures next to any of these projects as yet. My problem is that there's going to be huge competition for scarce funds in the 10-year plan. Uh, and for me, uh, zoo spending is discretionary. There are other things that aren't discretionary, which will be fighting uh, for priority. Fixing pools, uh, fixing libraries, building theatres, um, traffic congestion. The growth in our city over the last decade has uh, come back to bite us. Uh, our existing uh, street networks are probably built for 100,000 or 120,000 people, not 160,000. And we're facing some serious costs to, uh, to retrofit the existing uh, network that we have. There's a big priority as far as I'm concerned. Uh, if it comes down to a choice between uh, expenditure on capital projects at the zoo or uh, fixing some major traffic snarl-ups, I know what's going to win for me. And none of this even takes into account the pressure on, our, uh, on us um, in terms of growing the city and we know what a killer that is going to be to our finances. So my heart is with these zoo projects, it really is. Uh, I think it's a pretty good looking plan, albeit um, a bit light on detail in terms of uh, figures. Uh, but if we approve the zoo plan today, which I think is what it deserves, it also needs to be with an understanding that ratepayers shouldn't expect it to be a vision that is going to be realised in the near future. Unless we can come up with a spectacular funding plan, the best we've ever had, many of these projects will never see the light of day. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Councillor Casson. Yep. Thank you, Chair Lady Paula. Oh, look, I, I, um, I, I love the plan, but unfortunately, I can't, um, I can't support it. Look, I have said previously that Hamilton already has three zoos. You've got the Hamilton Zoo, which is full of exotic animals. You've got Hood and Victoria Street, which is full of drunken animals on a Friday, Saturday night. And you've got the Hamilton City Council Chamber, which is full of political animals. But look, um, for the zoo plan to come to fruition, it's going to cost um, $15.688 million. And to be fair, it may well exceed that total. I love animals as much as the next person and believe we must do our utmost to protect and conserve the world's endangered beasts and educate on importance of all God's creatures on our magnificent earth. 
I used to belong to the WWF, which is a World Wildlife Fund, Gary. It's not uh, World Wrestling Federation. <laughs> and um, look, 15 million, though, is a hell of a lot of money when we have some fairly important decisions to make in regards to where we can best spend our limited funds. I came into council as a concerned ratepayer and with the belief that we should be getting the basics right first and setting our house in order before we start thinking of big, fanciful projects. 197 submitters out of a population of 160,000 people and 161 people wanting the plan is not an overwhelming groundswell of people to sway me to say, yep, let's push ahead with this. Minor improvements can and must be made at the zoo, which I agree with, starting with the cafeteria and the entranceway. However, that would be as far as I'm prepared to go at this stage. We have roads here in Hamilton that cause residents concerns, where money has to be spent on them to make them safer for public use, and that should take precedence over a zoo. We have a social housing crisis, and where the opening of both Peacocks and Rotokauri has to take precedence over the zoo. We may get some of the HIF and the paying back of that money, which could be in the vicinity of around about $260 million, has to take precedence over the zoo. And if you add into the mix the, founder, uh, the Founders Theatre, it's another $30 million. We have the ratepayer who sometimes gets a rough deal in regards to what they pay and the services they get from council, and they must take precedence over the zoo. We have a lot of must-dos that have to take precedence over the would-like-to-dos. We have not got an endless bucket of money. It's time to spend wisely, like we were elected to do. Thank you. Thank you, James. Councillor Henry. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Um, I won't be as long. Look, I support the motion. I just believe in um, the zoo has got a magic, it's a magical place for children, and uh, yes, there, there, there are animals in there that some children will never see in the wild. Um, they never have a chance to to see anywhere. So, it, it's um, just having visited Singapore Zoo and the Australian Zoo. It is it is a beautiful place for families to go and and see something different, have a different experience, and that's what the zoo is all about. Yes, I totally agree that uh, I. I, I stand for not spending any more money either, absolutely. Um, I, but there are other ways to do, to do something like this, and I think we haven't explored um, anything. And I understand we have to have a plan first before we can attract outside um, um, contributions. So, yes, we need houses, we need all that, and I, I totally get that. Um, but. You know, one thing that really excited me was that, that young families wrote in and, and um, had their say about the Sioux plan, which is, which is very unusual because they, they don't have time, they don't actually have the headspace even to think about it. And to me, that, that excites me because, I mean, I, I visited the Sioux when the children were little and it was just great. And I think we, we need to change it to, for, for more people to be attracted to it, and I think it could be an amazing place. One of the things I, I'm really hot on is that we are getting people from the outside to help and uh, have have a buy-in from 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 our from our city, have a buy-in from the people that live here, and the buy-in is through what we've just done at Arbor Day with Waifa Kariki. We have a buy-in to, um, for example, Habitat for Humanity does so well, building houses um, for for. An, next to nothing basically, or contributed from the community. And I just believe we can do the same for the zoo as well. And we just have to think broader. We, we, we shouldn't always think the council has to pay for everything and anything, and that it will cost three times as much while it used to in the, in the past. But we can change that, you know? We're a new council, we can change all that. And I just believe that we look at things differently and have working bees, and there's so many things. I know somebody will laugh again, but I, I talk about the, um, the, uh, the Amish people in America, how they build a shed in a weekend, and things like that. And we can do that too. We just have to, and we, we can get the buy-in from, from Hamiltonians. Once, 
once a family or or somebody helps with a house or a, a building that that stands for for 30 40 years they will bring their grandchildren along to see look i've built that house they they're excited there will be a lot more buy a bigger buy-in into the in the whole co into the whole community. So I'm excited about that. I think that's one of the few places where we can have the city contributing. Uh, probably not as easy at the, on the river, but there in the zoo, I can just see that we can all contribute a lot more. Um, yeah, that's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Henry, Councillor Bunting. Thank you, and I, I, I love what you said, Siggy, about um, community buy-in. Um, in South African terms, they called it Ubuntu. And Ubuntu was the name of the rhinoceros at the Hamilton Zoo that was named after me. Originally they called it Bunty because they listened to the show and then we had a little campaign because it had to be. No, it's gone. <laughs> Saved. And it, using my time. And, it, um, and uh, <clears throat> they moved it to Ubuntu because Ubuntu uh, is an African term which means community. Basically, if a warrior from another tribe walks into your tribe uh, when you have, yeah, uh, and he's injured, uh, you look after him, even if he's the enemy. You patch him up, dust him off, and send him on for the good of the species. And we are in Hamilton, a part of a much, much bigger picture. What do we want for our city? We want it to be, I've heard it bandied around many times, the best, places to, uh, the best place in the country to live, work, study, and play. And I've got news for some of my more frugal councillors, play has an L in it. Pause for laughter. The potential of the zoo is fantastic, so I will be supporting it uh, to go to the annual plan, but I do echo my friend Jeff Taylor's uh, comments that this had better be a really good funding proposition. The potential is fantastic for the city in a unique way, in fact, three unique ways, uh, if you can have such a thing. Education, tourism, and conservation. As an education offering for our schools and for our Waikato children and for children of the neighboring areas, it offers a unique experience and a unique um, maturity in the conservation field. Uh, conservation, um, I was encouraged to hear of it being a part of a cooperative breeding program. Um, this zoo serves a much larger purpose than us, than us just standing there looking at the pretty animals. It, is, um, it has enhanced the well-being of many, many species around the world. And as a world citizen, I think Hamilton really needs to stand up and play its past part. But one thing is being absolutely omitted by this debate, and that is tourism, the potential for tourism is massive and tourism councillors is New Zealand's number one industry we've got the gardens and we're complaining because it's bulging we need something else this is not a cost to my mind it is it is an investment Mayor Andrew called it a boutique zoo and he's quite right it is a boutique zoo it's a unique zoo that cities um, other cities our size don't have in other words they can't boast it's a unique proposition that Hamilton has God knows we don't have mountains, we don't have a beach, we need stuff. And unfortunately, because we don't have the natural ge geography that's going to drag people to us, like Tauranga or Dunedin even, um, we need to do a little bit more ourselves. So our balance is perhaps a little bit different. This, to my mind, is not a cost, it's an investment. It's an investment we should look at wisely. I opposed this going out to consultation originally because it didn't have a funding mechanism attached. And I stand by that decision. Um, but I was encouraged to hear that um, that was a hearty part of the presentation today, uh, and I'll be really interested in the, um, in the debates we have in the 10-year plan if this gets through to that stage, which I sincerely hope it does. But I do have to make a comment about the consultation process. It's rubbish. It's absolute rubbish. 194 respondents um, responding to something that could cost us $15 million. To my mind, there's something wrong with our system here. We can get more comments on our own Facebook pages than 194. Um, and for a lot cheaper. So I think oh, it behoves us to, as a group to really start looking at how we uh, consult with our communities because that, to my mind, is such a small sample. It actually doesn't bear a lot of weight. But if you do want to look at the numbers, um, contrary to what um, Councillor O'Leary says, how they're willing to pay for it, the highest proportion of them, 77%, said they supported, as they supported funding through community partnership and sponsorship. So that's not entirely the community paying for it for themselves, but that's just a minor thing. But I'm really excited about that because if the zoo plan is to go ahead, which I would really love to see, um, then I would love to see a fantastic financing model or a, a fundraising model. But it's going to be a big one. It's going to be a big, tall ask, and we need to ask ourselves some tough questions, but not to be afraid to make a bold decision. Thank you. Councillor McPherson. Thanks very much, Chair. 
Um, when I take my granddaughter to the zoo, uh, she absolutely loves, about, loves it and talks about it for weeks, if not months afterwards, and remembers the names of the animals she saw there, and she's only three. Um, but she's going to be a bit upset with me today because while I support the zoo continuing for the reasons that she likes going to it, I don't support it at this point expanding, and I want to be honest about that. Uh, I, it's not a matter of ignoring the submissions. I've looked at the submissions, 194 submissions. I, like um, Councillor Ubuntu over there, think, <laughs> think that, uh, that the, the consultation was pretty pathetic if that's all we got. I um, put, started up a Facebook page the other day on congestion in Hamilton and got the same number of submissions for $35 in five days. Um, you know, so I think we can do a hell of a lot better if we really want to prove the case. I don't think we should lord that number of submissions. But they were also made to a proposal that had no funding with it. It was a proposal that was put out in front of them. It, was, it looked great. The pictures were fantastic. I would have put it on my coffee table any day. But it didn't have any money to actually do anything with. And of course people were going to say they loved it. And then they got a bit confused when they ask, asked how it should be funded. And it was even more confusing. And I sort of, it irritates me when I see that people who weren't even in Hamilton and paying rates or rent in Hamilton are submitting on that in significant numbers. Um, again, without any effort to extract any money from them. And I think that's one of the weaknesses of the report, actually, and, and of the work we've done on the zoo so, so far. Look, councillors, when you go to Wellington, do you go and visit the zoo there? I know I don't, but I have done twice now, gone in the last 20 years, gone to Wellington and visited Zealandia. That's a different sort of experience. That's a native flora and fauna experience that's deliberately set up. It's it, not in the same place. It's like visiting their version of Waifakariki on a much bigger scale. Um, and that's something that's far more attractive to me than visiting some rather sad looking animals from Africa and South America and Asia that are in our zoo. No, I mean, we can't provide a native habitat for them. Um, the elephants in, in Wellington and the giraffes in Hamilton are freezing their ass off at the moment. <laughs> um, you know, that is not their native habitat. But um, the tuataras love it up here, the when we've had it up here. You know, that is their native habitat and native climate and so forth. And I should I urge you to think about that sort of thing. I urge you also to think, councillors, about what you plan to do when the LTP discussion about the zoo comes up. Are you going to put that in front of the river plan, in front of fixing the congestion on the route that you come in to work on most days? I bet you're not. I bet you're not. And that's the problem. I think you're setting this one up to fail. I myself m may well support one or two individual zoo projects to do with the LTP that make sense to me, especially, say, the connection with Waifakariki and anything that expands that side of things. I, you know, I, I probably will support that. But I can't bring myself to support um, having more uh, uh, programs for animals that aren't from New Zealand, to be honest. Um, I think we are, Councillor Ubuntu, we are part of the, the worldwide community, uh, and I would rather see the money that we put into uh, having rhinos mating in Hamilton <laughs> put into having them mating in the Okavango Delta in southern Africa, for instance, supporting some programs over there. I think that would be more honest and more um, sustainable long term. Um, Councillor Siggy talked about uh, supporting Habitat for ha Humanity, and I think we should, well, that's a very good thing to support, but not Habitat for Animals, not from, from uh, this part of the, the world. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is the funding. Uh, I mention again, no work's been done, really, in reality, on seeking other funding. And this is one of the big reasons that this uh, program is striking difficulties uh, around the council table today and the last time, is because we're being uh, asked to support 
a grand plan with no finance attached. When we, I'll give the, some credit to the last mayor, and councillors will know that I, that's extremely rare for me to do, but when she put up the plan for the expansion of the garden, she put up a funding proposal for it as well, and a rating proposal. I didn't support that, but it went through, and at least there was some dollars attached to that as to how we could actually go about and do it. We haven't had that today, and I'm not even going to support an expansion of Waifakariki unless I can see where the money's coming from. So I would like to see us think about what our priorities are and be honest about them. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor McPherson. Councillor Tooman. Thanks, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, what we've got here, of course, is a motion on the board, which is to receive the report and approve the Hamilton Zoo Plan. Uh, that's basically all we're going to do today, and uh, I fully support that. When I look at the 194 submissions, 83% of those persons who submitted uh, say that the Zoo Plan will deliver the desired outcomes of fun, uh, conservation, education, and sustainability. Going back a few weeks, when I look at the parking um, submissions, there's 449 of those and 82% of those people said they did not want the two-hour parking. To, they did not want the free parking, I should say. Um, yet we went ahead and did this. The question I ask is, do we ever listen to our community out there? What attractions have we got here in Hamilton? We've got the Hamilton Gardens, uh, we've got the Hamilton Lake, uh, we've got the Arboretum out there, uh, the Waikato River, we've got a stadium and uh, a few other bits and pieces. So what we have to do, of course, is to really tie in the zoo plan here with Lake Whaikakariki. And uh, I visited Lake Whaikakariki with Bruce Clarkson there a couple of months back. And now that the um, canopy is getting so high that it's a different environment under there to what I ever imagined it would be. So we can tie those two together. One of the big issues appears to be the um, uh, opportunities for sponsorship. And Stephen, I think you mentioned about 30% of sponsorship in some of the other zoos. I've just uh, had a quick think about, for example, the motor trade industry. And there may be some opportunities here because the Holden Badge is a lion. Fairview Motors sell a Ford Cougar. You've got a Dodge Ram. Peugeot have a Tiger. A Lamborghini has a Bull. And, a Puge and, um, and the Peugeot with the lion. And when you look at Ingham's, they have a great wall, which could I see be a very good boundary fence for, fence for the zoo. So there may be some opportunities out there within the industry to actually get this sponsorship going. Thank you. And Mayor Andrew, top that. So firstly, I'd like to say thank you to Stephen and Nick for the work you've done on this and for presenting this to us today and your obvious passion for the subject. Um, we've all seen the rocking animals, the pacing animals, the frustrated animals that are kept in captivity at zoos over the years. Large exotic animals that will never be re released into the wild. Animals that are kept for children to come along and tap on the glass and make the lion roar or the tiger roar. Tiger roar. We wouldn't do this to our own species and we shouldn't be doing it to large exotic animals in our country in a cold climate in a cold climate and in small um, confined spaces um, my dream for uh, the area out there is to um, bring the zoo in keep the Set, set the budgets the same as they were in September 2015 and hold that budget there, pest-proof pest fence Waifakariki and use it as a conservation, education and breeding and release area for New Zealand natives. So this isn't about cutting budgets, this is about holding the budgets where they were in September 2015 before we had a huge spend out there and um, doing what we should be for our own environment, for our own, um, with the welfare of our own country. But that's not what today's about. This is about a $15 million spend. It's $15 million that our city doesn't have. It will be $15 million that we have to borrow. It's $15 million that we're gonna have to pay interest on. 
and it's a $15 million spend that we're going to have to upkeep. The cost of life on that $15 million will far outweigh the $15 million spent, and it's $15 million that we are going to have to pay back. Our city is borrowing $4 million a year just to maintain existing services using the government reporting measure. The zoo is already running at a $3 million loss, and we are now proposing to spend another $15 million not only on maintaining what's there, but on increasing the offering. The last council in this chamber voted through $1 billion in plans over the life of those plans. Plans that will never be delivered. Let's be responsible and not add to this group of unfulfilled dreams. Councillor Gallagher. Yes, thank, thank you. Um, I obviously, first of all, uh, uh, applaud uh, the work that Stephen Stan and his team have done. And as you know, he's a renowned professional from the United Kingdom, Channel Islands, Auckland. And I would say, in terms of the previous line of questioning, is that you would hardly appoint a zoo director who was not enthusiastic uh, for uh, the mission of the zoo. And I think my focus is always uh, is very much on the conservation theme, but also joining uh, international uh, partnerships. Uh, I will, of course, strongly defend the mayor in terms of his sobering message uh, to this council. Um, and clearly um, the challenge that he sets us around when it comes to the long-term plan of how does this stack against a whole lot of range of other necessary things that we have to do. And the reality is that the likelihood of the complete um, master plan being achieved in 10 years uh, may not necessarily be achievable, but I do think with proper external funding and partnerships, and picking up the point that Professor Clarkson made around the co-development of the Lake Fifokariki Zoo, then I think there is a way forward there. Uh, I know I sound like a cracked record, um, but we've had two debates, two discussions, where we've discussed a facility that is next door to households that don't pay. And one of the challenges through the long-term plan, and I do support the master plan, I want to achieve what we can of it, external funding, and I thank the wonderful external partners and the wonderful expertise and staff up there. But one of the challenges we face is the absurd situation where the two houses in the zoo pay rates to the Waikato District Council, and their rates don't make any contribution to the zoo because they're just outside our boundaries. Uh, we have uh, million dollar properties around Lake Rotokauri, which is the low density Hamilton based suburb in the Waikato District Council, just down the road, that will pay nothing. Uh, but if you live in Baverstock Road, Norton and Frankton, you are expected to pay towards this uh, 10 year plan. Uh, someone was talking about the $23 of subsidy for every person that goes through the gates. You know, they pay a fee. So uh, the good people of Frankton are generously subsidising the good people of Tamahiri uh, for their visits, and so many other examples, museums, Founders Theatre, you know, a performing arts centre, uh, all of these regional facilities that we have to solely fund, solely fund as a Hamilton rate payer at the moment, and frankly that is no longer sustainable, it is absurd, it is wrong, it is unfair. And I just pick up uh, Stephen Sandley's point around the previous Auckland local government structure, where even Auckland, before the super city, had the ability and the wit to fund things jointly like the museum and the zoo. So all the cities in the surrounding area, all the local authorities in the surrounding were able to fund it. So frankly, this reinvigorates us, I believe, along with wanting to seek funding for a regional theatre, uh, that is to actually start really being proactive with our region and identifying regional facilities for funding. Now, that does mean we get to help fund the Raglan Surf Club, the Raglan Reserve, the Raglan Beach, because that's a Hamilton Beach as well. I get that. So I think that is um, something... So, again, I'm just saying that this particular uh, facility does highlight the need for us to advance uh, a regional funding argument 
uh, basically in the end to go to local government commission, we have to decide that the, the current way we fund stuff is unsustainable. Uh, the other thing which I um, think is very important, this also highlights that I think a Hamilton card is coming sooner rather than later. Now, what does a Hamilton card mean? You go to Tarong, I go to the hot pools beneath the mount there, easy. You know, you see the thing on the thing. If you're a Tauranga resident in ratepayer, you get to go on that hot pool for cheaper than me as a visitor from Hamilton. That's fair enough. I go to facilities like the Polynesian Pool in Rotorua and some of the facilities in Rotorua and around the region, and there's a sign there. You go to a place like Dunedin. If you're a local resident, you get a deal. And why should you not? So I think uh, through our long-term plan, Mr Chief Executive, Mr Assistant Chief Executive, um, I think we need to be talking about a Hamilton card. I think we need to be talking about a day or two a year, and, and again, I obviously have to come back to Stephen and your success around how that stacks with a business plan around cost, and a Hamilton card will give you free admission once or twice a year on a couple of open days at certain select facilities, wave your Hamilton card. What that means, if you're from Frankton, you get a free admission to a facility you pay for. If you're from Tamahiri in your multi-million dollar home, you don't. You don't. You pay. Uh, and, and I will finish. So I think, again, I'm supporting this plan. I think it's a visionary step forward. But through our long-term plan, we're going to come up with that huge crunch that we are a small city with constrained boundaries funding things that the region should help us pay for. Thank you, Councillor Gallagher. I'll make a few comments myself and then take it to right of reply. I am speaking in favour of the um, motion. Uh, look, cities do need um, a clear vision and direction. We're told that very often and I believe it to be true. Tourism, the tourism sector has told us we need to add value to the range of opportunities for domestic and international visitors to Hamilton. We've mixed up actually a whole lot of issues in today's debate, from the funding of it to health and safety to animal welfare and the plan itself. Having the plan is what we are here to decide on today. The funding is an LTP issue for debate, and I agree um, with Stephen's comment that we can hardly uh, go out and seek funding partnership without a plan or direction. Like many of our plans and plans, and Jeff touched on this also, the River Plan, uh, we will debate with the public in the LTP space as to the pace of progress and how we will fund that. And it will be challenging. And I don't think the zoo plan should be put up in front of everything else, but I think it should be in the mix with everything else. And that's, to me, what this is about. As an individual, look, I love aspects of the zoo plan and I have doubts about some others, and that would be the same for everyone. But a city must have a strong sense of direction to work from, or we'll be a bit like a rudderless ship just floating around without a course. I also feel it would be disrespectful to negate the work of the working party that's been involved in that, and that was before my time on this council. It's actually not important whether I like modern zoos, or uh, though actually I do, or um, if I support conservation, though actually I do. What it is, is important to have a sense of what makes our city worth living in or visiting. It's important to let the ratepayers continue to engage in their vision for the city. It's also important that we provide for a range of um, quality facilities <laughs> for today's residents. The people who live here now are visitors and new residents. We can't continue to let what we have grow old and stale. I also support having boundary issue conversations with our neighbours. Um, Martin has pushed that strongly today and I agree with him. We should also be pushing the conversation around a regional funding model for a number of facilities. Uh, and the other point I want to make is that I do strongly support um, connecting uh, the front part of the zoo to Lake Waifokareke because we've got this beautiful um, facility with Lake Waifokareki. They're going to add cross value to each other. People are already beginning to walk across the road anyway, which is not the safest way to do it. So let's think about doing that smarter and get the win-win. Look, it's a challenge. We've got lots to think about in the LTP, lots of worthy projects. We are going to have some very big debates on that. But let's be fair with this plan and put it in the mix with everything else. Angela, right. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, years and years of ad hoc decisions put this city into financial difficulty that council had to rectify with the 2012 uh, long-term plan, which took significant uh, th three, basically three years to balance the books. Those were decisions with the exception, actually, of uh, some core infrastructure, those were decisions without plans. Those were decisions without strategy, without vision, and without careful consideration. Councillor Mallet referred to uh, my uh, unhappiness recently in this chamber at uh, what equated to around $2 million worth of decisions that we made. Those decisions were unbudgeted. This plan, if it makes it through today, it will go up to the LTP and it will either be funded or not. At this point in time, it's not unbudgeted. The appropriate budget decision will be with everything else in the annual plan, uh, in the long-term plan. This doesn't jump the queue. Putting in $15 million today would jump the queue. This is considered this is planned and this is thought out. This is not an ad hoc decision. I have no doubt that we are going to, as, as the Chair pointed out, have some furious debates coming up in the next few months in this chamber as all of our priorities compete with others. Councillor McPherson said, I bet you won't put the zoo ahead of other significant projects. He's possibly right. I don't know where I'm going to sit yet because I haven't seen all of that picture. None of us have. It's going to be tough. Uh, Councillor Casson said, how wise is it uh, to spend ratepayers' money like this? It was pretty wise a couple of weeks ago when this, committee, uh, this council supported parking for an unbudgeted million dollars, and that went against public submissions. So all this does is get it on the list. It doesn't jump the queue like parking did. It gets it on the list. And this has been going since 2014. It is considered, it is well thought out, and it is actually what the people that put us in these seats and in this room want from us. We will debate the budget. It might not even make it into this next 10-year plan. It might sit unfunded. But until we have that debate and until we see, as Councillor Southgate often says, the entire box of chocolates, we don't know. This is the only course for us to do. And, and let's be a council that actually listens to the people that put us in these chairs for the next two and a half years, because that's the very least that they deserve. Thank you. OK, thank you. We will go to the vote. The motion is carried, 8-4, for against. Okay, thank you, councillors. That brings us on to another interesting item, which is the river plan, item 11. So just in, um, Jean is going to give a context to this, but I just um, draw your attention to the purpose of the report because the river plan is an immense thing in its entirety. The purpose of today's report is to seek the approval for this 2017-18 year. You put a river plan task force together to, to do that work. I'm going to let uh, Martin introduce it uh, and it's uh, about what might go forward from today. Uh, River Plan Task Force and obviously Angela is the deputy will suggest if you mm. just like we could ask Gina first of all just to go through the technical and the outcomes uh, also uh, f immediately following her uh, Angela may want to talk to the meeting that you had yesterday that I was unable to attend because I was out of town thank yes, you and then be I'll be happy then to speak further uh, the other thing too if I may 
um, just I've had a subsequent ring from Murray Bindon on my phone, and that's to do with the issue of the LIMS report on their properties, and apparently there are at least three properties that don't have that particular pathway on their LIMS, but I'll, I'll cover off how we may approach the property owners okay. later on in so terms in of that process. So in speaking yeah. to me earlier, uh, mm. Councillor Gallagher, you indicated that you would like to, to I will move give and... Yeah, I'll give, I will, uh, with the leave of my seconder, I will move uh, and seconded by Councillor O'Leary, but I, I will add just about three words in the recommendation that will probably cover off subsequent okay. appropriate negotiation At least, at least we get the motion sure. where it is yes, to talk to. So. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Gina. Sorry, I'll turn that on. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I just wanted to, um, in response to the public forum earlier this morning, just advise you um, that I had met with Murray and Helen um, last week to discuss this proposal, and I will continue to engage with them through the design process, and we are taking on board their concerns, and we'll do our best to mitigate them as best we can. Um, like Councillor Gallagher said, the vege vegetation management plan is in full swing in that area, and this work will also be continuing throughout the Victoria on the River project and the um, construction of this extension if it's approved by you today. So, um, as Councillor Southgate just pointed out, the purpose of this report is to seek your approval of the River Plan Work Programme, which has been recommended by the River Plan Task Force. Um, it is also to... Um, Introduce to you the phase one projects for Ferry Bank Development Plan, which the task force has again um, put together and are recommending to you. So stage one of that phase one is part of the 2017-18 work programme, and there, and there are further three more stages, which will um, be considered by the task force um, for 10-year plan discussions. Um, I am going to show you a presentation shortly, but I just wanted to let you know it's really important to note that these concept images um, are at a very high level and the intention of them is to show you the intended purpose of phase one um, and if, if it's approved that we continue to work on, the, on these projects then there is a lot, of, lot more design and engagement and consultation to be undertaken. So I think um, what I'll do is just run through the um, presentation and then I'm happy to take questions. Or well, Angela can speak to this after I've done this as well. Okay. Okay, so it's pretty small. This this map is really to identify the area of that phase one covers. So this image is between the two bridges, between Claudelands Bridge and Anzac Parade. The white line in the river indicates the area of um, phase one projects for the Ferry Bank Development Plan. This is um, the current view from the Waikato River looking towards the Waikato Museum. And, um, in, in, in going ahead with the phase one projects, this is the high level image of what that connection between the museum and river could look like. So the phase one projects include um, a connection between the museum and river, um, a pontoon, and, and phase one includes um, us, a temporary works to enable that to be used in the short term. Um, it includes the ecological terracing to address stormwater issues, uh, stormwater runoff from the park. Um, it also includes the um, riverside promenade, which is at a higher level, so it's not um, flooded so often. It includes the connection through to Sappermore Jones and through from the museum to Grantham Street, improving access to the Gothenburg and ANZ building precinct. It includes a connection and upper promenade from the museum right through to the Embassy Park, and that's an accessible link, which would then continue um, if the 2017-18 program is confirmed right through to the um, Ibis Hotel. So currently the upper promenade runs from the Ibis Hotel to, um, it's being constructed at Victoria on the, on the river. We're proposing 
in our work program next year that the link continues through to Embassy Park and in, in the remainder of the link as part of this phase one set of projects. So for those of you, um, so that's just one image. Um, it's a little bit hard to see on here. This um, just shows the, the, the plan view of the connections. So you can see the white path that goes from the embassy park all the way through to the museum, links into the bottom of Sappamore Jones, and then through to the museum, and then on through to Grantham Street. I might just put the next one up because it's going to show it to you in a bit better colour. So those are the, um, the different colours denote the different um, projects within phase one. So um, what we're proposing as part of the annual plan projects for 2017-18 is that we would do some temporary enabling works to the pontoon, which is shown in green, and we will do some work to the connection between the museum and Grantham Street, which includes the Gothenburg precinct, so that's the purple to the right-hand side of the screen. The other three stages I've highlighted in the report um, are proposed staging for those projects. However, this would be determined um, in agreement with the Tar River Plan Task Force um, once we uh, can get on and do some further investigations in design. The, um, the Waikato River Explorer has um, spoken to us about um, wanting to use the, um, the GT in the short term if, we, if this um, gets approved. And so we feel that those two, the two projects that we're proposing for the annual plan um, will make a difference to people being able to connect through from the Hamilton Gardens to the city centre and then um, have an, an easier way to get up to Grantham Street and the, and the CBD and the museum by doing these, um, these first projects in phase one. There's, um, and then allowing us to start engaging with um, our external funding partners to work towards, um, a, you know, being able to um, complete the remainder of the projects over the next three to five, three to four, five years. Um, so oh, I'll just go back to this photo here, and you may have picked up. Oops, not that one. Sorry. Um, this one that there is a lift in this picture and um, this is because we feel in the task force feel it's really important that we have an accessible connection between the river, the museum and the CBD. So um, in working through this we've looked at a couple of different options and like I said before this is really high level and this is um, you know needs further work and development but if the lift was not an option um, then to get an accessible um, path, the oh, sorry, the red line um, shows the length of the ramp, the length of the ramp we would um, have to make to make it accessible. So there is an existing path there, but currently it doesn't meet accessible standards, so it would have to be reformed and reshaped so that it could. Um, and then it would be proposed that there would still be um, stairs and terracing. Um, in place of the lift so that there was that direct connection from the museum to the river. Um, Martin or Angela, do you want to speak to this at this point? Yeah, well, let, uh, Angela talked yep. about where we got to yesterday. Yep. I just wondered whether it was worthwhile pointing out where those um, units where we had the oh. gentleman this morning. Yeah. Just, just, just put them on the map anyway, and then Angela can talk about that as well. Um, so it's a little bit hard to see on this um, map here, but you can see um, Victoria on the River Lance all pointed out. There they are, just there. Yeah. So <laughs> that connection um, obviously goes from the edge of VOTR through to Embassy Park, and. Um, and we don't have any further design on the exact alignment of that. Um, we, we need approval before we can get to that stage, but Angela, I'll hand over to you. Hmm. Yeah, thank you. I stepped in for um, the Deputy Mayor as he was on uh, other work duties yesterday. So we just, the working group just uh, saw this this morning, uh, yesterday morning, so that was myself, 
um, uh, Councillor Taylor, and then oh, and Councillor Southgate, and then Councillor Ziggy, who's not on the group but has been coming along as well as Councillor Pascoe has been popping along as well. So, um, so we saw it yesterday. Uh, really important to note that it just supporting what Gina said around this is high level stuff. Um, as we as the group were talking and commenting, we were sort of you know bouncing ideas off each other and uh, coming up with different solutions. Um, so it's really important that the committee uh, accept that what you see, exactly what you see there is possibly not what you're going to get. Um, we had a lot of feedback on, uh, I think predominantly our conversation was actually around connecting the, uh, the opportunities for us to open up the bottom of the museum and then connecting what's already there, which is connecting through Gothenburg, and I think Jean has touched on that as well. Um, but just, I guess, the critical decisions that the group is looking for from you today is to uh, support the annual plan budget, the projects that are sitting under the annual plan budget on in the recommendation, and then also the extension of the task force um, to be able to present come LTP time or to have some input for LTP the uh, following projects that we would we think we would like to um, see for the you know first two years perhaps of the LTP. So I think that's that'd be the two critical things that we're looking for support today. Um, I don't know, Martin, did you want to get any of the other members to have a comment or no, 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 the only thing I would add is that I would just believe that that negotiation was well and properly on the inside track from that. Okay. That's so you fine. Come to Thank that. you. Okay. On the when we put up the recommendation that I'm moving with seconded by Angela, just a couple of words I'll add. That's okay, all. at okay. that time. Okay, That's thank fine. you. Well, it, um, I know Councillor Taylor would like to say something. I'll just just um, just reiterate what um, Angela says that this is a, an indicative concept plan. Um, so you shouldn't read too much into it in terms of final style or detail draw up. Um, you might think certain elements of it don't look quite so as attractive as you'd like them to have looked, but this is um, this is because the final design has not been done. But it is around the principles. It is around the connectivity between Victoria on the river and um, Grand and the um, Gothenburg <coughs> behind the museum, opening up the museum, allowing accessibility, getting some the pontoon working and um, maybe um, allowing for some cycle facilities and bits and pieces like that. So, so just, just don't, um, let's not get lost in the small detail. To the, the GM, it's my very clear understanding that um, the task force will, with your leave, will carry on uh, doing the work in terms of the, the micro detail, but obviously council will then tick off that micro detail, will tick off the final plan. Yeah, that's the that's the idea. So this is all the very high level. Do you yeah. believe agree in what we're doing? Direction Let's travel. not lose ourselves in the minor mm. details. Mm. Councillor Taylor, just want to make a few comments. Yeah, I wanted to find. Like, there's just a couple of points I just wanted to emphasise, if I could. Um, one is the, um, the the option, the work, the um, the work the task force has put up um, takes advantage of the fact that uh, the, the Victoria on the River work is going on at the moment. Uh, and there's an opportunity to connect uh, Victoria on the river to Embassy Park. Um, the bulldozers are there now, so it sort of makes sense to do it now rather than pay for it to be done later on. So that, that has, has um, gone into this plan. Um, and the other thing is just to emphasise that this focuses on the opportunity to open up the museum as part of the museum strategic plan. Um, so rather than the big cost of constructing a new river centre, which is in the original river plan. This is basically um, suggesting that the museum, for all intents and purposes, becomes the river centre, uh, which is a you know a big saving of money. Um, it, 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 in terms of resources, it's, we think it's a good move. Um, and it, the other thing is that it also concentrates the efforts somewhat, sort of away from Ferrybank being at the end, but more to the stretch of Victoria on the river. Um, to Embassy Park, uh, into the museum, into Gothenburg. Yeah, but uh, that's about all I've got to add. Okay, so let's um, let's um, get into the questions now, Councillor Pascoe. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, first question I've got um, in paragraph paragraph 25, we've got uh, in the box there the second line down the ferry bank 
development plan phase one, stage one, 475,000. Is that the same 475,000 in paragraph 42? Yes, it is. Okay, okay, so we've costed that through. Have we done any costings for stage two through to stage four at this stage? No, we haven't. Okay. Um, we have got um, some, some very um, rough order costs <coughs> from the original stage one of the Ferry Bank development plan, which was focused more down towards the Anzac Parade area. So, um, and, and that was estimated at about the 10 to $12 million mark. Um, but I don't wanna say that that's what this is gonna cost without us being able to actually get in and do um, some investigations and some design work to know the length of the ecological terraces, the length of the promenade, how many stairs and terraces we need to make that connection to the museum. Okay. But you, I mean, I imagine it would probably be in the same ballpark. Okay. Can, can stages two, three, and four be done separately? Uh, are they in, uh, are they each dependent on the other, or could we do stage two, for example, and? Stage three and four might be done a year or two later, or years later. Um, or there is, is it, there or is, is it once we kind of start, we're on the treadmill and we need to get the other stages finished quite quickly? Some of the projects definitely interlink, so we can't do the ecological terraces and um, the promenade separately because they are basically um, intertwined. So if we're raising the level of the revetment, then of course we have to create a new promenade for people to access that. Mm -hmm. um, again, I think it, I think there's the potential definitely to stage things, and I've said that this, this staging is indicative and that we, we really do need to do some further investigations, and that could be looking at doing um, a small section of um, terracing and promenade around the, the jetty and the pontoon area to make that connection to the terraces that go up to the museum without stretching back along towards the rowing club. So there's, there are a lot of options and that's really where we need the direction that we, can, that we can get on and start doing some of that detailed design so we can give you some more accurate costs. And you're likely to have those costs in time for the long-term plan discussions. Is that, is that the timeline? We would be hoping to have um, some uh, a higher level in cost confidence by then, but probably not the final final costs. Okay. Um, just coming back, just the, the next question is coming back to paragraph 25 again and the connection for the upper promenade, VOTR to embassy. Just taking into account comments by Murray Binden this morning about the sand and the instability of, the, um, of, of that area, and I, mm. and I know we've had examples of that in the last mm. few years, and I guess we will continue to have um, um, uh, issues along that, that walkway. Mm. The 750,000, is that, and I'm thinking here of the VOTR too, yeah. where we've had to pour more money in once we kind of got started. How confident are we that the 750 will, first of all, complete the task and do it in a way that it will be mm. sufficiently stable yeah. Uh, in terms of current engineering um, yeah. cert certification and so forth, um, or are we, or could we see um, this escalating up to maybe a million or a million five by the time it's finished, given that that yeah. instability on the on on the riverbank? We would hope that this is um, sufficient. So what what we have, um, how we've. Um, come to this cost estimate is that we've modelled it off our um, costs that are, that are occurring at the moment at Victoria on the River. So um, the land is um, obviously very similar to Victoria on the River, it's, it's neighbouring property. Um, and we've just completed the, um, the piling um, for the boardwalk so we know the depths that we've had to drive the piles to, the lengths of the piles, and so we've based this estimate off the worst case scenario that we're having to drive the piles um, as deep as we did on VOTR. Um, and the, this um, budget also includes um, things like lighting and CCTV and handrails and you know e everything, so um, I'm reasonably confident that we will be able to achieve it within that budget. And you feel confident too that you've taken into account the comments he made this morning. Yes. Having lived there for a number of years, I think that 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 
the bank is quite uh, has got some stability problems. Yeah, so um, it, it, it is very similar to um, Victoria on the River in that the, the way it's made up is, you know, it is sand. Um, there is um, a layer of fill on the surface, um, obviously probably from when the apartments were developed. Um, but we have um, sourced some original geotechnical investigations for that site in um, investigating whether this is an option to complete. Um, the engineers um, are ready to start completing further investigations once we get approval to do the project. Um, and it, the same um, engineering and geotechnical solutions that, have, that we've completed with Victoria on the River would be completed here, and, um, and we would go through the full process around um, doing um, applying for land use consent and obviously building consent, so um, it would be structurally sound. Okay, thank you. And the last question is just around um, the um, Donny Trust uh, momentum funds. Mm -hmm. um, I had in my mind, uh, obviously wrongly or, or hopefully right, that if we tossed a million dollars into the pot, which is what we have done in so far as the budget was concerned for next year, that we would be a step closer to being able to draw down the money that Momentum is holding on account of the Donny Trust. Mm. Um, and all I read in here, and I may have missed it, but I read in here that the uh, discussions are continuing with Momentum on this money. Was I wrong in, in thinking that the million dollars that we put in wouldn't be reasonably immediately matched by the million dollars that they had put in? Um. The expectation of, of momentum is that, in, in the Donny Trust, but momentum are acting on their behalf, is that um, they really wanted to see their contribution leveraged for us to gain support from other external funders, and which in turn meant a longer commitment than just one year and one project. So by um, by supporting um, phase one, which is a series of projects which can, can be completed over a series of years, um, we're more likely to secure that funding um, by supporting the, the projects and then that will enable us to approach and work with other external funding parties as well. Um, and discussions with Momentum is that um, I've, I've obviously discussed with them the, the Phase 1 projects. Um, they think they're a, a, a good bunch of projects and um, meet their criteria about being a transformational and intergenerational project. Um, and yeah, they're eagerly awaiting the outcome of today's meeting to see the support shown for those projects. Okay, so phase one could get us over the line in terms of being able to um, fund this or perhaps something that's re that Will, re will, re will happen reasonably soon afterwards. I would imagine by, so. By way of using yeah. of using their, their money. So so um, support for phase one will enable us to develop a funding strategy for phase one. So in 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 stage one, that's confusing. Stage one, which is proposed to be completed under the annual plan, kickstarts us off on the phase one project. So we're making mm -hmm. a start. Mm -hmm. um, that puts us in a really good position because in stage one is some some funds are set aside to start doing that detailed design, and that sets us up really well to then go and talk to potential funding partners because we can actually show them these projects and we can show them that yes, there's support. Um, for us to start looking at that strategy and how we can achieve these projects. Okay. And yeah. final question, have you got other funders, line, external funders, who have indicated an interest at this stage? Not necessarily having to name them, but are there others out there who, who are going to follow the momentum or the Donny Trust lead? Um, I can't say for of? sure that there is, but I would imagine, yes, we, we've got some potential funders that we would definitely start talking to once we've got some confirmation that these projects are supported. OK, thanks. Thanks, Gina. Madam Chair, I just wonder if I could clarify <coughs> just um, the stage one projects in the annual plan won't won't be enough to secure yeah. momentum funding. No, no, I was thinking of yeah, the stage... The, 
the stage it, one, which is down in box. I oh, know that's the in LTP. Box they're at LTP stage one. It is a little confusing to follow. Oh, so that, that'll be stage two then, won't it, on here? Well, it's some of the projects in the LTP are stage one and some are stage two. The first part of that's where the reports is a little confusing. The first part of stage one is the annual plan projects, yep. which we is the first part of the recommendation. Which is which is box twenty five. But to yep. complete one stage one, all of those lines Phase that one. were on there. <laughs> getting Sorry. confusing. <laughs> so so, 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 so I, I just clarify that my understanding is stage one is what is in box twenty five. Yes. Which is one point two five yep. million, which includes the four hundred and seventy five, which is in your stage one. In the box that follows on to stage yeah. and 42. Yeah. yeah, stage stage one of yep. phase one is the 475. The other two projects, the connection to Victoria on the yep. river and yep. the wayfinding signage, are not part of phase one, although they link directly to the outcomes. Yeah, yep. but we funded 1.25 yes. million, haven't we, in in the 1718 yep. year? Yeah. So that's the spending of that. Which includes the 475 for stage one. Yes. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Councillor Gall uh, Matt, uh, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was going to call you Councillor Gallat there for a minute. Sorry about that. No problem, that's all right. Pantius, uh, Councillor Southgate. <laughs> Um, thank you. And, and Rob, it was such a, uh, such astounding questions, and I'm going to ask a couple of them from a different angle again. <laughs> um, uh, first of all, uh, why would we trust your budget? For the 2017-18 mm. annual plan, mm. um, we have had our contractor that is working on Victoria River on the river price this mm -hmm. based on um, the likely design, you know, the same design that we've just completed at Victoria on the river. So we've, we have um, paid for that work already. So it's, it's come in, it's billed. So um, we've got complete cost confidence because the work's just been carried out in the last couple of months. And um, while they are on site, um, I'm not sure who raised it earlier, but they've, um, their establishment for their contractors, we've already covered in, under VOTR. So this is a real opportunity for us to actually save money because if we don't take the opportunity to build now, we're, we're basically boxed in, there's no direct access um, to that site, it would it would um, the establishment of a new contract to do that would add another probably another two to three hundred thousand dollars. So um, this is why, um, as it, during the task force meetings, we've raised it that it's a great opportunity to um, piggyback off a project that we're already doing. We've got our contractor on, on site who's geared up and can is ready to move in once we have all our um, consents in place and um, so yeah we are I am confident so, about the cost so who, who what so were there are two parties involved us and the contractor is there an independent or third party peer reviewing or because you know um, we've had some right royal cock-ups in uh, project management quite recently um, so ACOM um, are our engineering consultant, engineering and design consultant that are working on Victoria on the River along with Edwards White Architects. And they have both been involved in the cost estimate to date and the proposed alignment. So we've got sort of, um, I can't remember the exact length of it at the moment, but they have um, completed some initial surveying to um, see how long it's gonna be and therefore they can, they've been able to um, accurately provide this cost estimate, and the seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars does include a contingency as well. Do those parties have any skin in the game? No. So there's no pain for them if they get it wrong. Um, well, why do you think that should be unusual? <laughs> the, uh, this would be a variation to a contract that we've got at with Schick at, at Victoria on the River. It's a measure and value contract. So, you know, there, there is an element of, there's not really any risk, direct risk to them, you're right. It is, it is on us to get it right. And that's why 
Um, the task force will know when we originally discussed this, I said there's an, it's an approximate figure and then when we went away and did the calculations, it was a little bit more, but that's why I'm confident that we've, we've costed it accurately. What's, is there a plan B or what, 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 what are the mitigations if, if something goes wrong? What sort of thing do you mean? What's going uh, to go they wrong? Just got, they just got their figures wrong. They, it's a lot. The, the, the geotech's totally different. I know lots of uh, Victoria and the river. There was um, the old Waikato Times building was discovered um, yeah. about an hour, about a, six months after, we, or sometime <laughs> after we'd bought the thing anyway. Yeah, so we have had a, um, the engineers. And, and I mean, um, sorry to interrupt you, um, you know, Maori sites or all sorts of things. Yeah, I mean, it, with any project, there's a an element of risk around the unknown, which is which could be, you know, an archaeological find. Um, so kind of our job is to make sure all those risks are prudently identified and mitigated. Yep. Yes, and um, so um, we have already started those discussions. Um, <clears throat> and we have, like I said, we've, we've priced this on the worst case scenario. So the deepest piles that we had to drive at Victoria on the river, that's what we've priced it on. We've priced um, for um, retaining to be on either side of the boardwalk for the continuous length. And we know that it's unlikely that we're going to have to do the full um, amount of retaining that we've priced. But we've put it in there because we d I said to them, I don't want a surprise. I want us to be confident in our cost estimate for this project. And, um, and I'm, I'm confident that we have got it right. OK. So just as an example, today we've got a small matter that, are, that was arisen through Mr... Um, the lawyer, what's his name? Mr. 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 Binnan, thank no. you. Uh, his, his th now, that, th that, that's just one little thing, OK? And it, it might be nothing or it might be quite big or we might just ignore what he wants and go ahead anyway. I'm not sure what, what, what we're going to do there. So that's just an example of stuff that could come up. So, OK, leave that. OK, how much of these projects are thin the end of the wedge? By which I mean with these, these, these stage one, stage two, stage th all these stages, to what extent, once you start stage one, you have to go ahead with stage two because, um, I don't know, the, the, the bank will fall down if you don't do it. Um, so can, with can, with so the stage uh, one projects for, for phase one, which is the um, enabling work for the, um, the jetty and the... Um, Sorry, I'm just finding the page. Um, so, yeah, stage one is the um, connection between Museum and Grantham Street, which includes um, an improved link to the Gothenburg precinct um, and a better accessible connection so, between... So, if helpful, can I just get Lance to jump in and talk about what contingencies yeah, are Yeah, I, I think Gina's just missed that in the, in the figures. There'll be a contingency amount. I said that. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. I think she did, you did say did, that yeah. it was a contingency. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, that so answer, we have that. Yeah. Yeah. So does that not answer your question, Harry? Well, how do you know the contingency is enough? <laughs> anyway, anyway, look, I'm just all this is is a, uh, yeah, the the process, um, consequences of some right raw cock ups we've had in the last six or seven months in terms of project management. So I don't want that to happen again. I, I, uh, I think at the end of the day, you're right. What you're saying around in a um, geologically challenged challenged mm. area. I think you're right, um, that there, there may be unknowns, and I think as soon as we know those or the contractors or the design team actually find those, then um, then obviously we would need to come back, and if there's any budget implications, then is either rescoping the project or, or come back to council. Mm -hmm. But I think um, the key thing is um, being aware of those as early as possible and try and look at those... Um, all the possibilities. That's why you need to do good investigation and good design. So yep. the, the, the answer to the question. So really those are the same things that I would have been told last time when they did go wrong. Okay. Well, it's going to come. Back yeah, so to hang on, Paula. Um, so when you talk about enabling work, and that's stage one, presumably, it it's a disaster if you can't go ahead and do stage two. So that 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 almost ob obliges us to do stage two. Is that right? You said the enabling work for the um, for the pontoon for the jetty. or the jetty. Yeah. yeah. So for the jetty. So that's not building the jetty. That's doing something. That's a precursor to building a jetty. Is that right? Um, 
through through our conversations with the task force, we've uh, you know identified obviously we've got an existing jetty at mm. at Ferry Bank, in the um, Ferry Bank um, development plan, there was uh, identified for a new um, pontoon pontoon to be further south, um, and we've um, looked at a solution of of how we can um, make the jetty usable in the short term. So that's why it's called temporary enabling works because. Um, it means we can do some works that will have no, um, we don't have to do the ecological terracing and the, and the promenade to, to do these works, which is if we put the new pontoon in, we would have had to do these works. So um, it is a standalone project. Um, and of course we want to see the connection made to the museum, but it, it's, it doesn't, Okay. You know, directly impact on it. Okay, so one of the risks I can see, and perhaps it's, it's not, or you can perhaps you can sort me out here, but one of the risks I can see, there's stage one, stage two, and lots of stages. Um, does each time you do a stage commit you to the next stage? Because if, if things go wrong and there's an error or, our, you know, suddenly we get all our money for the HIF and suddenly we realise we've got to spend all this other money somewhere else, can we stop at stage one and things, at stage two? We would probably just have to modify the stages slightly, like I said earlier. So um, at the moment, um, stage... Um, sorry, I'll just find the chart. Um, stage two is the connection from the museum to the river. That, that's pretty fairly set. And, um, yes, we would want to look at doing... Um, some retaining and some promenade, promenade between the pontoon and that connection. But what we would do is just rescope that instead of um, building 200 metres of ecological terracing, we might do 50 metres so that um, and reduce the scope of the of the um, museum terraces to make it work. That, I think that's how we would be solutions focused around that. Would those, but those would have cost implications, wouldn't they? You would, your economies of scale or the, the, the contract is doing a different job than you thought it was going to be doing? Well, you know, when you look at a, um, a staged um, project or phase of projects, there's always going to be um, cost benefits to engaging in the full, full phase. Yep. Because, like I said with Victoria on the river, there's establishment for a contractor to come and set up. So if they're set up, even if they're going to be there for two or three years, where you're saving money if you commit sure. to doing those projects. So yeah. yes, if you just say, um, we're gonna do stage one now um, and then come away and do it in uh, stage two in three years time, the cost for doing that, that additional stage at that time is likely to be higher because we will have to go through those same establishments. So costs. the concern for me is that we're lighting a fuse that we can't stop. So I think, once I you've think done we stage need the one opportunity stage, to okay, do what, some investigations and design. Well, hang on. So once yeah. you've done stage one or stage two, you, you can't pull out of stage three without it incurring a, a huge cost when you come back to do stage three, which then brings pressure back onto the governance group to say, oh, well, yeah, well, no, we weren't going to do this, but now we're going to have to because of that. Well, my understanding about that is that these have been designed to have phases that stand alone. This first thing in the year 2017 But Paula, 18. can I be blunt? I don't trust what's coming through here. Well, no, I the get stuff, that. The stuff that we have, we have had so many cock-ups that I'm just get, got to a stage where I've got, I feel like I've got to ask these questions. So someone's, yep. got, someone's got some accountability and yep. that's what I'm trying to achieve. So no, thanks for your help. I know I get that, but we're going around a bit, a little bit in circles here. So we do need to get, get you, your question answered and move on. So, to so what extent are, you, are we able to efficiently and effectively, and without risking our reputation, um, stop, at, stop at a stage two? So look, everything's gone, turned to custard, we're going to have to stop here. I think, uh, like I said before, um, that the staging that's identified in this report is um, costs and staging are indicative and require further investigations. Um, I would be... Um, so for a start, those, those are your best guesses, at, well, guess is the wrong word, those are your best estimates at the moment, which it, is all you can ever do. Yeah. yeah, so during stage one, which is where we've got some funds identified for us to carry out that, that further investigation and design, then I think we can come up with a 
um, an approach that can be staged without too much effect okay. on... The, the difficulty we have is that there's quite a bit of money from third party funders, which I think is probably critical, well, is critical for this to go ahead. Something starts to blow out, and the, the um, risk is that we lose that free, that, that you know, third party funding. There's a lot of pressure put on councillors to, shit, we need to get that third party funding, let's go ahead and, okay, we'll spend another couple of million more than we we're going to. So we need to have those things really visible right, right up front. And as I said, I am yet to be conceived that this organisation can mm. get those things right. So I think um, if the um, recommendations are approved, it gives us the opportunity to work with River Plan Task Force over the next few months so that we can have some more confidence in the program that will be um, put forward to be considered in the 10-year plan. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor McPherson. Oh, Bunty, you dropped off oh, again. No, I'm just so confused. I forgot to put it. Oh. <laughs> again? <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> I've got four questions, Gina, thanks. Um, where's the kids' playground? That's the first one. Uh, not in phase one. So um, yeah, I can't see it anywhere in any of the other phases or stages. So this, this is um, phase one of the Ferry Bank Development Plan, which we are wanting to start um, doing some work around so we can engage with our um, potential external funding parties through the 10-year plan process and this is part of this approval for um, the task force to continue working on prioritisation. The river plan um, itself has a huge number of projects to be completed over the 20 years. The role of the task force is going to, to work on prioritising those projects. So that includes things like the playground, Hayes Paddock, um, do you want to look at doing the Pukete Flower Bridge in 15 years' time? There's so m there's there's a lot of projects and they need to be prioritised. Yeah, I just wanted to find out about the children's playground, not all the other ones, because um, I regard that as quite crucial. And uh, so you're putting that in the category of the sort of 10 to 20 year list, because I can't see no. any reference here to it in the one to the the annual plan year coming up in three days' time, or the 10-year plan list, which I'm looking at here, it's got a list of major sort of areas of work, but it hasn't got anything that might conceivably cover the um, the children's playground. No, I understand that. I guess the... So I'm not... I'm asking... Yeah, but let, let's get clear about what the purpose of today is. It's about that first well, bit. Well, hang on a sec. I, I'm asking a question um, where the kids' playground is. It's not an annual plan, fine. So I'm so, But yep. we've also got an outline of the work areas in the 10-year plan. So I'm saying where would, might it be covered under that list because there's no, no <laughs> heading there that would include that. I, I don't need it explained to me, thanks, Chair. That's um, one of the projects that the task force will be um, looking, so the, ta the, the role of the task force going forward, if, approved, if the extension is proved, approved, that they will look at prioritising river plan projects for the 10 year, for the, to, go, to be considered in the 10 year plan. So there's- But you've already got river pro projects that are to be included in the 10 year plan listed here at the bottom of page 49 and onto page 50. Yeah. You've got the projects so, listed. So there's nothing in there where a playground would fit. Well, it could fit alongside that, depending on what you want. Well, what yeah. You so my question, Gina, is um, is why are those ones included, and that what the one I'm asking about, not if it could fit alongside. So, I mean, so when we, as a as a task force, discussed the current projects in the river plan, they identified that their focus would be on connections to the CBD. Right. And, no, that, that's fair enough. And so that so that's why we've included um, phase one of Ferry Bank Development yeah. Plan. Um, there's more phases, obviously, for Ferry Bank Development Plan. Which aren't explained in Which the aren't report. explained in here because that will be covered through the 10-year plan process. But other things that will be covered through the 10-year plan progress are covered in this report. Oh, for further, yeah. 41 to, to 43. Those, pro those project areas are all covered. Yes, but so not, not the playground. I'm, I'm just, it's yeah. quite simple. I mean, did, maybe I'll ask it another way, Gina. Did the task force discuss the playground at all? No, we didn't discuss that, the well, playground. It would have been easier to say that to start with, so it's not included. OK, that's what I... In discussions or in the report, that's fine. Um, well, it's not fine, but it's understandable. Um, 
So you're talking about the task force now. Um, it's proposed in the resolution that it be extended to June 2018, but it's for the purpose, in D, of submitting a proposed program to Council for consideration in the 10-year plan. Is it not true that anything proposed for the 10-year plan will have to be provided to Council, let alone management, within the next three to four months? anything internal, there may be public what things coming later, but I mean, I'm trying to discover why it needs to, the task force needs to go through for another 12 months when there's really only four months worth of work that can realistically fit into the LTP. Should we let the chairperson talk to that? I think, I think that is a situation where um, the task force through the LTP process, right, will make an initial recommendation to the LTP. And again, uh, we want some leeway for, for, for just the sleeves rolled up, the detail. For example, even you, you asked around the playground, to be honest, it hasn't been discussed in terms of this first f year. We want to be doing some work around, um, particularly year two and year three in terms of a detail, and we want some leeway uh, around the micro detail of some of those uh, river projects. Also to be able to work as a task force uh, with external funders and that's going to be some critical things uh, next year and I would humbly suggest that it is not a good idea to work with internal funders with respect to openness with the cameras rolling uh, because we want to sit down and do some sort of negotiation really. Yeah. Um, with respect, yeah, yeah. with the ca cameras yeah. rolling, mm -hmm. would it not be a good idea when you're discussing the LTP to actually have the details, detailed costings of uh, significant oh. projects put in front of us, uh, i.e. by October-ish this year, yeah. rather than um, having some f work, oh. more work being done next year, and you, you yourself mentioned next year for the negotiations well, with the uh, with the external funders. A a absolutely, but I'm of the strong personal view, and, and I'm obviously this is a democratic being that we can be able. To, I, I believe that a task force, a smaller group of people, which is open, any elected member may attend and may participate as, as they wish, on, is a better instrument. Uh, to continue to develop what I call the micro details of this plan, uh, aspects of which can be quite don't, uh, don't complex. Those I, I, I ex let me don't those micro it. details need to come to the LTP? Absolutely, though. and well, as much detail as is, as as much detail as is possible. A lot of work to do. Sleeves rolled up. Should that should be the aim and an objective? I would argue. Uh, that in terms of the oversight, the supervision, the ongoing negotiations, then the task force has a role at least uh, to June of next year. But, the, but I'm entitled, through the chair, uh, we are always creatures and servants of the full council because... Well, hang on, I think we're getting into speeches now and I'm no, just supposed to be I'm answers just... to my questions. Well, but... I think, with all due respect, Councillor McPherson, Councillor Gallagher has attempted to answer your question. You may, you no, but may now he's going to a speech about something not related to what I asked about, which was whether, why we needed the task force to go until um, uh, uh, June next year, which he's answered, why he thinks so that. So Gina will make a comment yeah. on okay. that. OK, so I'm asking why the task force, would, he would conceive of the task force doing work next year, say between December and June, next year when we have to have the details in by about October this year. Um, I'm simple, well, simple question, why do you need the task force going past the end of this can year? Can I answer we, the we haven't, I haven't finished yet, yeah. Be, noting right. that the parking task force, which also has to look at details, has is, is only been extended by request of the task force until December this year because we knew we had to finish everything by then okay, for so, the 10 year so plan. Let, let, yeah. let Councillor Gallagher, well, the my question personal about view, obviously, is that the LTP on any project is relatively high level. There's a budget, monetary allocation, or not. All right. Now, subject to what the what we are determined, we determine the LTP, which obviously informs the future structure of uh, future annual plans in year two, three, or four, etc. I would argue that there is a strong role for a tightly focused river task force to continue to work with staff 
to actually uh, finalise and bring back to council uh, specific details of specific projects. So, for example, bring back when at the point of well, you see, with an LTP, you approve funding. All right, you approve funding of a project. The final tick-off, and this is my intention, the final tick-off of a specific project would still come back to, the, to, to council for a specific tick-off for uh, the details of a particular project. So, for example, you might approve X amount for a uh, adventure playground, right, in year three. I would argue that there's a role for, for a group to actually work with staff in terms of the exact details of that playground and potential external funders who could actually assist us. That, that, that's a, a view I have. Would you also argue that um, when uh, General Manager Chris Allen comes to us with a proposal for you know, a $6 million wastewater pipe extension that we should approve the, the, the envelope and then go away and set up a working party to work on them, well, work with them on the details? If, if through the Chair, you, you have a choice whether you have elected members closely involved with the ongoing development of the river plan, which I believe is going to be crucial to the future economic development, social development of Hamilton, et cetera, et cetera. All right? I don't think it's like a sewerage plant, with respect. Uh, and or you leave it all to, to the professionals and staff. And I, and I guess that's a choice you can make. OK. I've got a, a couple more questions. Um, is it correct, um, and I... Not sure who wants to answer this because I've got uh, could be the chair, could be Gina, could be Martin, or maybe even Angela, because they most of them, apart from Angela, have been asked to answer my question so far. But uh, <laughs> is it not correct that uh, that when we discussed the 1.25 million that Councillor Jeff successfully got through council, um, that one of the things that was said to us. At, during that debate was that that would help us leverage the $1 million from Donny Trust. And, and that is what um, our intention is with starting the phase one of projects. So that's why those phase one projects have been included in here, because that is, has, is what Momentum has signalled that they are interested in. So in actual fact, the Donny Trust money being leveraged depends totally on projects that are past the annual plan round. That we, in other words, we won't get it as a result of our 1.25 million capital injection in the annual plan, but we may get it if we give some more money in the LTP for the river plan. Well, it's about um, having support to, con to do those projects and how they're funded, whether they're... I'm asking a specific question, Gina. Will we get it or not as part of the annual plan or will it have to wait for further project funding from Council? Will we get... Let's just stop it at the annual plan. As a result of our $1.25 million... If we do no further works, we will not... I feel we will not secure it. That's a clear answer, thanks, because... That's something I'll bring up as well, because that's not what was put up in the debate. Um, the uh, last question related actually to the, uh, the, pro the photo of the, not photo, but the design before that, I think it was, where they had the, promenade, the new promenade pictured. If, uh, the one that, where they replaced the current path. That, yes. that one, yeah. This is probably a rhetorical question, but how many tonnes of concrete have gone into that to replace the um, the plantings and earthwork that was there before? The NEI, was that part of the job specs that they worked out? So, um, like I said at the beginning, this is a very high-level concept to show our intention of Phase 1, which is providing an accessible connection from the river to the museum. Um, this is... Um, if this project is approved, we would clearly need to um, continue to work on the final design and, um, and there has been no landscaping um, plan associated with this. This is, this is um, an image that's, that, we, that I've had um, drawn up um, at the request of the task force so you didn't have to look, th so that you didn't just see a page of projects that you could actually visualise what our intention is. And um, yes, there's quite a bit of concrete there, but there's also opportunity to improve the level of landscaping and planting. It works in with a vegetation management plan. 
um, for that whole area and obviously we have included the ecological terraces there as well for the riverside revetment. So, so may I just ask one question? You said from the river or from the river bank? What do you mean when you say by the river? So from the river assumes you need a pontoon from a boat, or are you talking from the river bank? From the river bank. The river it, bank. And the river and the pontoon as well. Like so you know, the, sorry, the end the game, the ideal end game would be here that um, someone that um, wasn't as mobile as yourself could go on the um, a, a ferry on the river, um, disembark onto the pontoon and make their way up to the museum and the CBD. Um, so that presupposes a whole lot of other stuff, doesn't it? Jetties and... Well, well, well those projects are all included in phase one, so the jetty and the yeah, pontoon yeah. and that connection are all included. But they're not included in the annual plan round of work? The annual plan includes temporary enabling work for the, um, the jetty. But what about the ex The second part of that was the access up to the museum? We can't get accessible access um, in, in stage one because it's, mm. it's that uh, larger project. I'm sort um, of confused when you're saying stage one and phase one. On I know, sorry, it yeah. is confusing, but... Um, you mean in the first year of funding you don't get the access to the museum? Correct. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was after. Yeah. Um, but you would say that that diagram roughly depicts the thinking of the task force? I'm not after it being the final design. I understand that yes, details the, change. Yeah, the desire to have a strong connection with the museum. Um, and as Councillor Taylor said, um, the museum is a, is a, a great opportunity for us mm. to provide... Um, a lot of the outcomes that were intended to come from the river centre, which was going to be further south at a cost of $15 million. So um, by utilising an existing asset in the museum and doing some minor modifications to it, then um, we can achieve some really good short-term, some really good outcomes in the short-term for our community and um, also enhancing sort of tourism opportunities to link between the Hamilton Gardens and the museum. And lots of hard walking and seating areas uh, added to what's already there. Well, what the, what the final materials are is yet to be decided. Well, but there's a difference, is there not, between... If you, can you go back one more slide? To the original... Yeah, thanks. There's a hell of a difference between... I can understand the bit about raising the path for flood reasons. That's very logical sensible, um, but above that you've got a heck of a lot of concrete replacing a heck of a lot of greenness. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty difficult to walk up that bank at the moment, so we do need to look at some sort of hard landscaping, and the most likely um, way that that could be achieved is by putting in some uh, most likely to be concrete terracing. Um, it's uh, Life is a lot longer than timber, so um, we would have less renewals of it. But nevertheless, you can, from that, get up f exactly in that picture, up that ramped bit, and through a zigzag arrangement, you can get up to what used to be Marlborough Street. What's it called now? Is, is Sappermore Cu Jones? Currently, um, from the jetty, you can, um, where that red line is, you can um, go up that way. It's just yeah. not an accessible path at the moment. Um, and then, uh, it's a little bit hard to see, but I believe you've been handed a printout. It was accessible to Siggy when she was on her bike the other day. <laughs> um, yeah. The purple line then, yeah, um, leads up to a current set of stairs that go up to Sapper Moore Jones. Right, OK, yeah. thanks. Yep. Thank you. Um, yeah, look, I've got to confess to having a rough idea about it when I walked into the room and absolutely no idea about it now. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just a little bit confused about the, um, the terms of reference of the task force originally was to, I thought it was pretty simple, to go and spend the $1.25 million. Um, why do you need to carry it on? Can you just walk that through me in really simple terms, please? Um, really, it's about us being able to um, show momentum in the Donny Trust that we're committed to delivering the River Plan. Right. And that will enable us to secure that, that their funding. Right. So, um, and so through the identification of the projects um, for the for the annual plan, um, we felt that it was um, a really good start to start doing some work in that in that very bank zone, right. which is where they've indicated they would like to commit their funding. But I got a bit lost when the. Um 
because Dave was saying we sort of need all that all that all that stuff in by the end of the year. Uh, so why would you need to carry on after June? For the task force. Yeah. Um, carry on from next week. Do you mean? No, no, no. To, uh, end of, uh, to next year. To next year. Okay. So um, with the one point two five million. Um, we've we've obviously identified three projects and we've put um, cost estimates for those yep. three projects. See that? Yep. Um, we've also said, um, uh, like with the wayfinding signage, that the final location and number of signs will be agreed with the task force. So it's about making sure that um, we're getting it right and that we've got that level of consultation with you as an elected member group and that's represented by the task force. Okay. Um, it also means that when we are accurate with our costs and we come in under budget for our connection to Embassy Park and we haven't spent our contingency, that the task force is there to say, yes, let's put some extra signage in or yes, let's um, upgrade an additional section of the path to make it more accessible. So it's just right. it's about having that support to me in the role to direct um, how okay. we progress yeah. these projects. Thank you. Cool. Okay. Getting clearer. Cool. The um, the timing of all this, how, how long is, when are you expecting this to start and finish? So with the um, annual plan projects, um, once um, they've been approved, and, and, and this is noting that's subject to approval at Thursday's meeting as well, um, we will begin um, our design for the temporary works at the GT. Right. And we would be aiming to have those completed, um, and, and it's hard to say when we want to have it completed because we don't know what it's going to look like yet, mm. but um, we're like really keen to see a jetty, uh, the jetty um, and being able to be used before, for this summer. Right, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and and, and then the connection... The yep, connection to Grantham Street. Yeah, oh, the the, con the connection to Embassy. Yeah. Um, we have to go through a process of applying for land use consent and um, extending our building consent from Victoria on the River. Okay. Um, so once we have those consents in place, work works work will begin. So and it will be carried out as part of the current Victoria on the River project, which is due for completion in early two thousand and eighteen. Right. Okay. So that connection would be completed. Okay. Um, in early 2018. Right, so that timing is starting to make it easier for me to understand okay. where we want to extend yep. the task force out. Thank you. No worries. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Councillor O'Leary. Thank you. I just wanted to um, ask about the apartments and that promenade, the upper promenade that we are suggesting go in. Was there an ob financial obligation? somehow on those property owners at some point in the past to do to put some path in can you tell me what that was um yeah um but he did say later it was notified on the number yeah, yeah. yeah. Kate, and I could be wrong. It, it was no a, indication um, that he was going to be expected to pay for anything. I don't the, think. No. <coughs> After he made a submission, that his understanding is that three properties that's not mentioned on the limb, um, and in debate, I will raise about the need for some long-term planning around this stuff through the. Gym. The but that's I can just give you an update yeah. there. Um, when the. Um, apartments were proposed to be built, they obviously applied for a land use consent and a condition of that consent was that the developer build a um, walkway in front of, or promenade in front of the apartments to Lincoln with Embassy Park. Now that was back in um, 1994 um, and I've been trying to figure out how uh, it didn't happen. <laughs> And um, we haven't quite got there yet. So it, it was in the original land use consent to be built by the developer. However, obviously it wasn't. So um, built by the developer at their financial costs? Yeah. Mm, okay, so a condition on a resource consent that we just haven't followed through with for whatever reason, but you're looking for something. Yeah, I, I'm guessing uh, there was, um, it appears that the land... Um, 
directly adjacent to where the apartments is, has been, um, give, I don't know, um, I don't know the, the full details, but is now in council ownership. So I'm wondering whether that is, um, is what has happened, is that there was some arrangement instead of them building the promenade that they've provided the land as part of their mm. consent, mm. Their, their development, um, and therefore, um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know all the details yet. Okay, thank you. And um, we haven't had any update from the Donny Trust yet. We're waiting for this to, oh, well, the momentum, I should say, waiting mm. for this to be either accepted or rejected by this committee and through the annual plan on Thursday because that's actually the, yes. the key yep. decision. Yep. And then once we've done that, as in the terms of reference for the task force, we'll... I'm assuming we'll organise through you, uh, get together with whoever they are, because that is part of our terms of reference, that we engage with those people and present the idea of what we want to do. And with the Momentum Trust, With yes. the Momentum Trust. So we yeah. actually don't know. This this may be uh, the projects that we, the task force has decided under the annual plan funding may be enough to secure for the future. We don't know. We haven't had that conversation well, yet. Yeah, we, we want yeah. to... Um, we want to present a program of projects. Yep. So um, momentum. Point of, order. Mo oh. point of order. I think this is the, just some deliberate misleading going on here before, because I asked the same question relating to uh, whether we knew whether momentum was going to give us the money uh, as a result of the annual plan, 1.25 million we voted. And Gina said clearly in her answer to that, that in her opinion, we wouldn't get it as a result of that. Now, Angela's question, we've had a different answer. Um, I, I so was, hadn't finished yet. I was just about to say that um, that phase one, which is a program of works, is what we need to go and present to them. The, mm. the projects just in the annual plan is um, the, the um, projects don't fit their criteria. For the for the annual plan projects. So we do, so we do know that we won't get the money because they don't fit the criteria. It's it's a little bit more complicated than it's. So what you're saying, Gina, is that we know that if we just spend the 1.25 million this year, that won't be enough. We need to go and talk to them about what you're calling phase one, and this has been a little bit of the confusion around the way this is. You know, with stage one, phase one, where it, where it starts on the, the um, um, map and where it finishes on the map. We were fortunate when you were in the workshop because we were able to step, 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 step right through it and stop and go, where do, what are we paying for? Where does it go? Where does it go? We were a little bit confused around that, I think, with some of this language and presentation today. But what you're saying is if we spend the annual plan money, only. it's unlikely to be change enough for them to want to bring their money in, we'll have to convince them or talk with them about phase one, which is the first part of the LTP thinking, right? Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yes, so we've always said that, and, and Momentum has always said that they do not want to fund the first project. They want to see commitment from council to delivering more than one project in the river plan. So the going back to just be absolutely black and white about this. So the annual plan spend is one project. Would not you, your opinion, because at the moment, as Angela says, we do need to go and have a further conversation with them. Your opinion is that's unlikely to satisfy them in terms of their potential investment. They want us to show commitment to further projects so that we can engage with other external funding parties because they want to us to leverage their... Um, million dollar contribution so that we can gain further external funding, which means more than which means a program of works to be supported yeah. by council doesn't mean necessarily 100% funded by council. Like I said, once we have a, a phase of projects that we can start working on, it means we can develop a, a funding strategy on how this can fit together and then how it can work into the okay, tenure so plan. I don't know, Lance, if you want to add anything from our discussions that we've had with Momentum. No, I think you've covered it pretty clearly. So 
So let me yes, just please, check in with members. Does that now answer your question, Councillor O'Leary, Councillor McPherson, in the same way? Full stop. Okay, no qualifications, no equivalent. Okay, so, but we'll you've, under, you've understood what the staff are saying to us, so at least now, perhaps. Yeah, but that's, what, that's what Gina said okay. before. So, yeah. Councillor O'Leary can continue her other questions and see. Uh, where no, that, takes that was us. my. That was my. That was the question. question. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Pascoe. Yes, just one quick question that came out of the discussion between you and uh, and Angela. Um, if the developer was remiss in completing that promenade uh, when the um, when the consent was given. And this may be a legal question which you may not be able to answer. Does that put the onus to do that promenade on the current owners? No. The um, consent condition was originally intended to be added to the titles of the properties or the units. Okay. Uh, and it never was um, because okay. it wasn't um, one title. It was, it's obviously um, six Un A unit titles. title or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's my understanding of what's happened. So we can't go back to the owners or the developer now? I, I don't I, think so, I think so, the no. developer would be a waste of time. Having found out who the developer yeah, was, it, was it would probably be a waste of, waste <laughs> and of time. I, and I think um, without knowing all the detail that obviously there was some arrangement made maybe with the with the land becoming and yeah. okay, no, ownership. that's fine. I just thought there might have been some op opportunity or option for us there. Thanks. Okay. Dave has indicated an amendment. It can't be. No, no, there is a motion. Um, okay. So it's been moved by um, Mayor Gallagher, Deputy Mayor Gallagher, and. At what Ali. stage was that? I, I was prior oh, notice as chair of the task the force. So oh. advised three days ago. Advised three days ago. No, no. I'm sorry. So when, can, when in the meeting was no, it? No, it was done at the very beginning. Can, can yeah. I clarify for Councillor McPherson because Thanks. I understand yeah. you're confusing. Um, Deputy Mayor indicated that he had a motion to put, yeah. which was the staff recommendation, with a few more additional wordings. That's so it, be fair yes. to you, Councillor okay. McPherson, you haven't yet seen the motion on the board, and Councillor O'Leary indicated that she seconded that. So the chair acknowledged that there was a, a motion on the fl on the table, I if you I like, but the, it hasn't been fully wordsmithed. Yeah, so, but I did note... For, and I, I so mean, it's wordsmithed now because we've had about a, a, an no. hour and a half since that no, was mentioned? No, point, point of order, if I can point of clarification, at the very beginning I said that I would be moving... Um, what says the recommendation from management? It should say recommendation from the task force on, on page 46. However, I did give notice that I wanted to add uh, add uh, an, an item with regard to the uh, Victoria to the River Embassy site that would involve negotiations with affected residents. Yeah. And I wanted to add that. So I'm wondering if, if with so the we'll leave of the chair, we could put that the initial recommendation and with the leave of the meeting I just want to add the three points and that that was the intended of my motion as the chair of the task force uh, I'd indicated that Councillor Leary was going to second that then obviously I respect the fact that there may be amendments coming out of that okay so let's get it up first because it and with those and then we can take it from there that won't preclude you doing um, yours as an amendment and actually it may be, I'm not certain yet without having seen the words, it may be that we can take the recommendations in part anyway, so it might might be part of the solution. Mm, let's let's have a look be. at it first, because it's nothing worse than yeah, talking if we could about have, nothing. Could we have that on the board? That would be good. And then I just want to have the opportunity then to add my Amy, three just words. put what he said for that extra. No. <laughs> no, I'm going to seek some advice from Lance as to word discussion versus negotiation. That would be, oh, oh, let me, can we have that? Right, so where, where we've got um, connection, uh, yeah, with, uh, are we, uh, I think, yeah, uh, subject to subject to negotiations with, with uh, so I'm, I'm expecting some appropriate report back because um, given that there is some issues around the so-called limbs title, understanding of residence, et cetera, I think that what we want to hear back from staff is that we hopefully, ideally, have achieved an outcome where the residents are We'll live what's being proposed. Uh, 
Now, I'm, I think I'm ha I, under C, I, I am of the personal view, and this is just a personal view, but I will go with the consensus around the table that there is a need for an ongoing uh, task force beyond the December to, to do exactly what I talked about, ongoing discussions and negotiations with external funders. I do think that even though we've had high level plans, even today you've seen even with one aspect there's confusion about what's on a limb, what's not on a limb. I do think there's further work to do, but I will bow if you wish to actually change that to the 30th of December in, in terms of its life, uh, subject to the task force having the right at the beginning of December to, to ask for an extension of its life. Uh, my view is if you look at waterfront developments anywhere, that I can think of, Brisbane, Ipswich, Tauranga, Auckland, they're, they're, there's always a tightly focused group that provides political leadership, and that's why I do believe that the, the, it would be better to go to the 30th of June, uh, and, I, and I respectfully differ. I don't think that you just put up a plan and then leave it all to staff. I do want to see ongoing political involvement, but it may be that this committee or, or council as a whole is, is the instrument to do that. Uh, I will say, and I, I do believe totally in openness and transparency. Do not get me wrong. All right. Just, I was just, right, I'll, just I'll, getting there. We were still co contemplating. I'm the just explaining why I would prefer the third. The uh, <laughs> it's a good try. With your leave, as chair of the task force, I prefer the 30th of June 2018. But if there's a consensus uh, that you want to to have a life span until the end of December, then obviously I'll accept that. 17 would be all right. Anyway, right, we've got it. We're, there's the, um, just make sure we've landed on the word negotiation. Martin, just man checking that you've landed on the word negotiation. Uh, staff's advice <coughs> is that consultation would give would be more fitting to the nature of the conversation, whereas negotiations has a legalistic point of view and yes, might suggest we it. wouldn't do the work. Consultation. But okay, I'm, I'm happy. Yeah. Yes. You, well, yeah. 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 Okay, because I'm not trying to craft it for you. I just want to make sure we land on the... Because I'm supporting A and B, uh, proposing okay. A and B. So you did want to put an amendment. Which was A and B alone. A and B. But if we take it in parts, would you be happy with that? And then, or do you still want to do an amendment? And then what's your habit? It doesn't really matter because uh, the, the amendment is the same as the motion for A and B. Okay. It just stops there. It just stops there. So we might as well do it. Are you happy to take your motion in parts? Move a seconder. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm in the hands of the chair. Let's do that because it makes no material difference. It gives people the right to express support for parts and dissension mm. on other parts. Now we're going to go okay. into debate. Can Dave just explain roughly where uh, it's Yeah, going? I think it, just, I, it would be handy to, if I just... All the but, uh, but aren't you going to do that in your debate? Aren't oh, we? Yeah, I just want to explain because I took it up about a quarter of an hour ago. Go on then. It's simply, I'm, the amendment is exactly the same as A and B, just that bit, yeah. and stops there. So in other words, the difference, which we're going to get on to, is the extension of the work of the task force or not. Yeah. So my amendment would, ha would exclude that, but, now, but, but say go on with the work that's currently planned okay. for, year, for annual plan year. Yeah. So the, in other words, it's the, we're the same... It, to that to the that point. Okay. So, who, you don't, I'm going to withdraw the amendment because there's no need. It's the same as your A and B. And we're going to take it in parts anyway. And, and so then C be... onwards will be taken. The chair says as a separate motion. Conso concerns itself with the AP, but not the LTP. Well, no. Mm. no. So let, let's get into that in the debate. I think we're quite clear about what the, the main recommendation is and what the amendment would have been, and I think we can solve that quite easily now by taking the recommendation so can, in parts. So can we remove C, D and E, separate them off? Just move them down a bit. We're going to take them as separate. We're going to... Yeah, oh, because it's confusing. They're, no, yeah, they're not part B. of the motion. Yes. Yeah. But they are part of the motion, but they'll be taking them in two parts. So you can talk early? Aren't they? They can take, be taken in two parts. Right, yeah, that, let's, that, get it, let's get into debate because I'm sure a lot of this um, will become much clearer. <laughs> from what we're discussing from the picture at all now, because we're only discussing A and B. 
We're not. We're suggesting. Yes. Oh, we're not. Task Force One. Task Force recommendations. My understanding, however, Chairs. is that the chair has agreed to actually vote in two on, 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 on in two parts, which obviously enables. Because uh, are, are we looking well, at two then separate I'll put debates? Well, I'll my amendment back in because <laughs> the, 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 the chair had a good solution, um, but it's, you're putting the rest of the stuff all back on the table, which well, means there's well, disagreement. When there wasn't about the f first two points. Well, the, yes. So the first two points will be taken. And you can vote in support of those. Then, because it is the motion, the rest of the points will be taken. To you, make it clear, I would like to put my amendment those. back yeah, in and see if I've got a second. Okay. Because right. it's not clear the way that, that? that the Deputy yeah. Mayor wants it debated. Seconder, please, for Dave's, Dave's amendment, which is just A and B. Any yeah. seconder? So, can I just ask Dave a question? Gary you can. seconded it. <coughs> Pro forma. Yeah. Okay. So it's been seconded by Councillor Mallet. Pro forma, through, through, pro forma whatever that means. With, with the leave of the chair, my, my understanding is I'm just clear that the the, the debate, I assume, is better to have it as one debate with all of the items. And there's two different approaches. Yeah. And it just is not wanting to talk to a tail Councillor yeah. McPherson or, or through, through an amendment. At least it means that there can be a clear debate in one debate, as I understand it. Because of what I'm reading is there are two different approaches to this exercise, yeah. of which Councillor McPherson's amendment actually has one approach, and the, the task force, frankly, has another approach. Okay, so we've got an we've got a motion, we've got an amendment. Mm. I'm going to let the That's mover it. of the uh, motion speak, then I'm going to let the mover of the amendment speak, and then we're going to have debate on both contemporaneously, and then we're going to go from there. Right, brilliant. Put my, put my motion. Yep. The task force recommendations up. Roll, roll down. Thank you. Okay. Um, um, speaking to that, and of course, um, may or not exercise my right of reply, I have accepted, or we have accepted, with the will of the meeting that you want this task essentially to be completed by the 30th of December. If we feel we need an extension, uh, that so be it. Uh, I just want to stress that um, this river plan development and the first phases of it, particularly in terms of the LTP, the next 10 years, particularly a focus, a micro focus on the next year one, two and three, uh, is a very, very important um, step in a city for a city such as Hamilton. Yep. I will say, however, that uh, I do think we do need to do a little bit of consideration at some stage as how best we provide ongoing political leadership of this major uh, plan and, and major entity. And I think it would be good to be reflective on what they've done in Wellington, Tauranga, or Auckland, etc. I'm not saying that there's one model that is the ideal. What I'm tr seeking to do uh, is I do strongly advocate for the assistance of a focus group of elected members via a task force model that can work with staff, uh, sleeves rolled up, to get into the micro detail uh, of the plan. Now, the, the long-term plan, annual plans can, can approve projects in principle, but it is that uh, detail that I think is very important. I do think that we potentially uh, have a uh, great opportunity to engage with a range of external funders, and I know that um, uh, there are lots of challenges in terms of that, you know, seeking external funds with, with, with the demands. And I'm certainly hoping through the LTP, the next phase of our LTP work, uh, we can get a, a better feel from Millennium, for example, acting on behalf of the Donny Trust as to the kind of LTP type projects that they would be interested in being partners with. And obviously, I sense that um, the funding will be forthcoming once Council has made its decision in terms of the LTP that it puts out for public um, consultation, because that will indicate whether or not uh, Council still sees um, an LTP that actually uh, contains some long-term funding uh, for our river plan. The other thing which I want to uh, stress is that I think you've got to see this debate today and this river plan as a series of building blocks. So what we've been focusing on is, is the first building block, which is year one, which was allocated, in, well, it's hopefully to be allocated in terms of the annual plan. 
which includes obviously the very important uh, uh, Victoria on the River site through to the Embassy um, uh, area, plus some work on the temporary jetty, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so I think that this is a good recommendation. I think the task force with staff is doing some good work. And I'll be strongly urging that uh, you maintain the mandate of the task force to assist you uh, in terms of preparing uh, for the LTP in terms of the projects that have been uh, outlined uh, today. And I want to stress that that task force is open door for any elected member who don't who are not members of it. And I know one or two, Councillor Henry, Councillor Pascoe, have been very constructive in coming in and providing assistance and, and ideas as well. Ultimately, and this is the critical point, no decision, not one blade of grass or one footpath is put down unless it's approved by full council. Okay, thank you, Councillor Gallagher. Councillor McPherson is um, the um, speaking for the amendment, and then. Look, I find myself in the curious position of probably going to be sounding a little bit like a certain councillor not very far away on my left when I speak here. <laughs> um, but this is a classic example of how smallish programs grow like topsy. If you ever wondered how the V8s got where they ended up, or Rotatuna Indoor Rec Centre got where it did, less for the more money sort of thing. This is how it happens. We get told, and we were told, in the debate on the 1.25 million put up by Jeff, that, and I'm not saying Jeff himself told us this, but we got told as a part of that discussion that we needed to show some faith with the project and put up something for a project ourselves in order to secure the one million from Donny Trust. Now we're told, no, no, uh, you have to spend that money first and then you have to show in the second year onwards through the LTP that you're going to put up more money still. And then if Donny Trust doesn't like that or doesn't fully like it, you'll be told about more again. That, just think about it, that is what is happening in this particular issue. Now I didn't vote for the 1.25 million, but I totally support us spending that now because it was a democratic decision of council. And the pro I don't particularly agree necessarily with the projects that they've come up with, but they've done the work on that and I don't oppose them, those projects, because they're logical, they mightn't have been what I chose, but hey, that's democracy. And uh, I, you know, the, pro the process is in place and we should allow it to continue. But the process that was put up to us three months ago, or four months ago, whenever it was, was not to have an ongoing task force, ongoing small group, which uh, self-described by the chair, Mar uh, Councillor Martin, was not to have that, a group that would then put up a whole lot more projects, costed, that would come back to council in order to secure the Donny Trust money. That was not the concept that was sold to us then. Now we're being given a different concept. So what I'm supporting is thanks for the report and the work you've done. Let's go ahead with the projects the task force was given the job by council of doing. Let's bring anything else, and there may well be other stuff, back to the full council to decide whether we want to go down that track at all. This is a classic muddying of waters administratively. <laughs> this is tying in work that we gave the, the group a job to do, to, they brought it back and they've asked for more work to do because they've got a vision about what else they want to do. They may even be right, though I think they're missing quite a few elements here, but that's for the full council to discuss. We do not want, <coughs> at this stage, on something as big, I don't think, as the district plan, to set up a small group a way to do a whole lot more work without us having had that discussion first. And I think that discussion that we all should have should be in the context of the whole LTP. We know, this is the last debate, we've got the zoo plan. We've got all sorts of things to do with HIF that will or may or may not come out, but there will certainly be a lot of growth issues. The current LTP does not cover anything like all the work we know is going to be needed just to keep up with, uh, with the pace of city growth, let alone try and get ahead of it. We should be discussing 
any, any extra river plan stuff, any extra zoo stuff, any extra roading stuff, any extra three water stuff, all in together in the same context, not basically setting off one group to go ahead and, and come up with some proposal in that area. We haven't done that in any other area. We shouldn't do it in this area. If we decide, as a matter of the LTP discussions, that we w want to put another two or three million dollars, let's say, or whatever it is, in the first 10 years into the river plan, we may well want to set up a group to do the detailed work on that. I think that's the proper time and place to, d to, to, to set up your small elite group to do that, uh, along in partnership with staff. Not to just give you an ongoing life and run off and do it now, that is, that is not actually a democratic way of doing it. It doesn't follow the original job that was given that task force. Thank you, Councillor O'Leary. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm just looking at the terms of reference here and the task force is on point with that in that we we're charged uh, by coming up with projects, suggested projects for the annual plan, the 1.25 million, and we were also asked to provide direction for 10 new plan projects to secure momentum funding and external funding for the future. So we are on point. We might be a little enthusiastic with wanting to continue past December, but I don't think that there's anything uh, wrong or certainly misleading in that. It's financially prudent to do it the way that we did. I hear Councillor McPherson's point about the playground, and actually I think that that's a, a key project through the master plan, but it's financially prudent at this time, and staff did the right thing by bringing the opportunity of the diggers are in VOTR now, we can connect from VOTR with the upper promenade to embassy. So let's do that, let's be financially prudent and uh, and employ some common sense. So that's why we did that as opposed to jumping into, uh, say, something uh, like the playground from um, the master plan. I think um, you know, it's interest politics is interesting, isn't it? Because you, you think you get a win one day. And I remember sitting in this chamber, I think I was sitting where Councillor Bunting was, the day that we adopted, December 2014, the day that we adopted the river plan. And a uh, little tear in my eye um, because I'd, I'd worked right on this at the beginning. And I, Councillor Gallagher is always uh, very correct in bringing, or sometimes very correct in bringing up former mayors and the works and the visions that they did for the city and that they handed over. And it, uh, I would be remiss in not acknowledging that. And in fact, all uh, elected members would be remiss in not acknowledging former Mayor Hardacre. This was her vision and this is her legacy that she will leave to the city. And it's also our legacy and our vision to implement and that makes me excited. Um, as I said, the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Gallagher and I have been involved and uh, right from the beginning on the working group, we are significantly invested. Uh, with this project, and that was uh, a fantastic project to be involved in with uh, considerable expertise around the table. I think um, I actually remember a, a few months ago wanting to kick my councillor, uh, my, my good friend Councillor Pascoe, under the table as he said uh, over a cup of coffee with um, Councillor Taylor and Bunting, I've got a great idea, and he'd done his number crunching. And he said, how about we put 1.25 million into the annual plan? Jeff, would you like to move that? I could have kicked him. But, you know, Jeff's passion as well around the river plan and, and something that he campaigned on is, is also a great thing. So I think that the support around the table is here. Um, I think that we all need to acknowledge need to acknowledge the legacy that the former mayor uh, will leave and also acknowledge actually our work in the future in the annual plan. We're getting on with it. We're delivering for the people of Hamilton because it's time to do that. They want to see diggers in the ground. They want to see things finished. And uh, I think that the task force so far has done a really great job in a really small amount of time. And thank you to you, Gina, for, um, for giving us some projects that are easy wins and actually will deliver some significant outcomes and connect really well to the CBD. So thank you for that. Thank you. Councillor Taylor. Right. Um, thank you, Paula. Where to start? Um, 
Okay, can I just, just summarise from, from my point of view, what the task force has tried to do with what you've seen today is, is centralise what we're doing based on a couple of opportunities. And one of those was uh, the, the work going on with Victoria on the river. So there was an opportunity to, um, to form a promenade to Embassy Park. Uh, now It was now or never because the work was going on so we thought we'd cash in and do that now, because to do it at a later stage would, would cost more. So that, that was the imperative behind that. And the other one was um, driven by realism, really. Um, the River Centre is $15 million worth. Uh, we saw an opportunity to, to leverage um, what was happening with the museum, with the museum strategic plan. Uh, and if that was opened out, then that, in essence, could become the river centre. So that's what drove what we're doing. Uh, and I quite like it in a way because it actually starts from a more central point than the ferry bank itself. Um, and it, it sort of works on that whole link between Victoria on the river, Embassy Park, uh, the museum, Gothenburg and, and that. Um, so, so that's basically, in a nutshell, what we've come back with. Um, in terms of... The, the position with Donny Trust, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. So certainly uh, when I proposed the 1.25 million in the annual plan, uh, my intention was to say, hey, we're matching your funding. Um, and, and that was very much my intention. And since that point, I think there've been discussions and my understanding, rightly or wrongly, is that they have, Donny Trust have felt they wanted more of a commitment from the council than that. They wanted some signal that this wasn't a one-off and that we had a program of work ahead that we're intending to do. And that's what we've tried to do. Um, so, so there you go. That's, in terms of the task force's existence, I feel that today's debate is a very good example of why you need a task force. There is a talking about the minutiae of a project. This is a very complex project. There's a whole lot of components to it. Do you really want 12 people around a table in public discussing it? Uh, if I was a funder watching this group argue with itself for two hours, I'd run a mile. <laughs> so the very point, the re very reason that we want, um, well, that, that I think you want a task force working through the minutiae bringing the council along with it and coming and saying, look, this is what we've got, what do you think, is to avoid that sort of situation. So, I mean, I, I, I'm with um, the Deputy Mayor, I, we'll go with whatever, um, with whatever the meeting decides, but uh, I think there is a very good argument for having a task force to work out the nitty gritty, uh, rather than discussing it all in public. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Pascoe. Thanks, Chair. Look, I'm supporting the motion. That's uh, paragraphs A through to E inclusive. Um, the River Plan has got considerable community support. This is a long-term city asset, not the council funding someone else's business like they did during the V8s. Um, I would like to see that, given that we've started the process with that, if you like, that seed fund of 1.25 million, I'd like to see the river plan now getting some legs, and I'd like to see it um, going a step further than that suggested by the Deputy Mayor. It's my belief that uh, stages two to four, which I think is called phase one in E of the uh, recommendation, I'd like to see uh, those stages be appropriately costed in time for the LTP discussions. And in the LTP discussions, the task force should present to council its recommendations in a similar format to the program that was approved for the gardens development. And that is council share will be X dollars and we can debate in the long-term plan how we fund those X dollars, whether they come from a targeted rate similar to the gardens or whether it comes from the general rate or whether we borrow. And then we throw out to the market the balance of the funding required as, as, and that shows one, one council's commitment and two, it puts into the marketplace uh, a commitment from council to the um, public-private funders 
as to who will then come to the table with the balance. And we can conveniently then put that into the long-term plan in the appropriate years, which is exactly what we did for the gardens. And it may well be, and I'm, 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 um, I'm just thinking as I speak on this, it may well be that the uh, targeted rate that we currently have from the gardens could be the replacement target rate for the river plan. And I think there's similarities between the two projects. You know, the, the, the gardens have, over a period of 20 to 30 years, created a very, very, very good asset for the city. And I think the river plan is also going to be a 20 to 30 year program. Um, and it will, when it's up to the state of where the gardens are, provide that um, similar type asset for the city. So I think my suggested formula for this will give that commitment to the marketplace that council is committed to the, to the, to the uh, river plan. Certainly the community wants us to be committed to it. And um, it will then open, hopefully open the door, as the gardens did, to bring some funders to the table. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Henry. So much, Madam Chair. Um, well, originally I was against a one, spending the 1.25 million. Um, yes, totally against it. Um, but uh, because I'm so nervous after the V8s and the Claudens debacle, and I'm so nervous, and I do, I do, um, I do understand um, Councillor McPherson, and I, I, I'm all with him there because. I was under the understanding if we agree with the 1.25 million, we will get the 1 million Donny Trust. That, was, that seemed to me totally clear now the, the picture has changed. That, because I'm nervous about spending all this money and we've done some, some th things have happened in the past, I, I did go along to the task force to, to see what's happening there. And um, I am... I'm actually excited about what, what is going on there now, and um, I will support the motion because I can see with, with even a smaller amount, not the 15 million for the big building, but with smaller amounts, we can, we can make a huge change that, that the public will love. And um, I remember years ago, I think, um, um, our former mayor, uh, Margaret Evans, said that most people just love an a nice walkway along the river that where they can see the river um, and, and some cafes and just some simple things. They don't need the big, beautiful um, Claudelands boxes and things like that. Um, and so the, I can just see in connecting that with, with the museum um, that will be uh, will um, bring people and well, well, the tourists will love it too, having that straight connection to the river, um, love the cycleways and um, making it more accessible to wheelchairs and everything. I, I just totally agree with it. Or of, with people with disabilities. Um, now, I did Google uh, something before and apparently because the government is now, because it is election year, they, they, they are, uh, all, you know, want to do something about the tyres. And there's uh, apparently in the Waikato we've got one million tyres lying around. And I just want to see whether we can use them somewhere along the line. I know Gary, um, Council Mallard is really excited about that. Um, but, <laughs> but if we can't use it at at the zoo, maybe we can use it along the river where we can, you know, or somewhere along the line, we can get some funding from the government to help us use that. So I just want to use more of what we've already got lying around that ca we can, can be used, what we're doing there. So Gina, maybe the, you can come up with what we can do with that one million tires or lance, you're going on holidays, lance. Um, <laughs> your job. <laughs> Thank you. That's me. <laughs> yeah. Carry, carry your bags. <laughs> That's right. Oh, with the children. We don't need a playground. Okay. Tires. Keep going because you've got two minutes or you're done. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm okay. Good. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Councillor Bunting. Um, look, I'll, I'll be quite quick. Um, I've, I've been a big supporter of the, the river plan all, the lo all along, and I was at that coffee. My recollection was a wee bit different, but uh, I was definitely there. Um, it was a great coffee too, actually. I, I, I was drinking wine. I had chips. It was fantastic. But um, and and I've and I've so I have. 
Can I, I'll carry on. And so I've, I've uh, entrusted the task force to carry on and do the job, but I've got to tell you, after today, it, it's really hard to support it because the information flow has been so awful. Um, if I hadn't had conversations with people on the phone about a promenade, about a museum opening or anything, I would know nothing. And this, I'm really sorry, guys, is, is a dog's breakfast. Um, and, you know, I'm not entirely stupid, so it was very, very hard to follow. So um, as a result, my hackles got up, and I thought, crikey, I'm laying a lot of trust in the people I, I know and trust, like um, the people on the tra task force, to support it. So I will support it, but by crikey, I, I'm going to need information a little bit easier. I mean, getting, getting this given to me two-thirds the way through the discussion, it was, it just, it's just not good enough. Um, so, you know, I respect the staff immensely, but this, in this case, you just about lost my support through it. But I will support it, because I, I trust you guys. I support it being extended to December. Um, but, yeah, it was a fine one. Thank you. Councillor Casson. <laughs> uh, uh, congratulations, because it's not, it doesn't really happen all that often, but today I've been blinded by bullshit, I'll tell you that. Because I really, things have jumped all over the place, and I don't really know what the hell's going on now. Look, we've been told that uh, the 1.25 million uh, that we... I didn't vote for it at the beginning either, um, would show good faith to Momentum to secure the funding, but now we're being told that's not quite right because that funding may not come forward unless we even go even further than that. Look, it's been mentioned um, it's delivering on the former Mayor's legacy. Well, quite honestly, I don't give a monkeys about the former Mayor's legacy here, and I'm not going to support something that um, I, don't think, I don't think is... Um, is quite right, where the funding, it looks like it's just going to keep on going, where we're not going to secure the funding from Momentum if we don't put in even more funding. And we've been talking before about having to be careful with our money, so I can't support it. Thank you. OK, thank you. Uh, Councillor oh, Mayor King, and then I'll say something to you. Um, so I'm going with the amendment. I didn't vote for the 1.25 million. Uh, it, it went through, and I am um, a part of what is being proposed here. I think that getting a jetty in our central city that actually works where a riverboat can drop or <coughs> or another riverboat, should they choose to join, um, will be able to drop people in and out of a central city and get them up to the Rose Gardens, get them up to Mystery Creek and get them down to the far end of Tiawa where there's another jetty going in. Uh, that makes sense. That's commerce, that's tourism and that's part of the 1.25 million that was voted through earlier. But um, financial plans have to be um, f financial plans have to be supported by d development plans. Sorry, have to be supported by financial plans. And at risk of sounding like a broken record, we've already voted through the zoo today at fifteen million dollars. Um, no financial plan with it. Um, I know that's still to come, still to roll out. We've got um, our city. Once again, to repeat what I've said earlier in the day, our city is borrowing $4 million per year just to maintain existing services when you use the government reporting measure. Um, we put forward the motion and it got through for the $1.25 in the annual plan. The money came through. We set up the task force to spend the money. All right, so the order was the money came and then we set up the task force to, to find the most appropriate places. When it comes to the 10-year plan, we, see, we, we know we've got plans, beautiful plans, glossy booklets coming out of our ears about the river plan. And there's, we can pick and choose as many things as we like out of there. When it comes to the annual plan, when it comes to the 10-year plan, we set aside a certain amount of money and then we set up a task force of how to, to guide of how appropriately to spend this. So, so we've all got all back to front here. And like I say, the last council spent a billion dollars over the life of, life of the plans, a billion dollars worth of, worth of plans that are never, ever going to... They got on the front page of the Waikato Times, on the front page of the papers. We sold it all to the people who live here. They all think it's going to happen. A billion dollars worth of plans can't happen. It's just... We've just got to have financial plans, as in a business, as in your household, you've got to have financial plans to go hand in hand with your development plans, with your ideas. You can't let them bolt forward, or else we'll just do, keep on spending, keep on putting out glossy pamphlets, keep on putting out ideas, and we end up spending another billion dollars. Of How long can the city live on unfulfilled 
dreams. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just um, have my say. Sorry, cold coming on. Um, um, you're right, Mayor Andrew, we can't afford a billion dollars on projects, but we can't afford to do nothing either. And that, for that reason, I do support the recommendations, both A, B, plus the um, C, D and E today. Um, I think this is about a number of things. It's around showing uh, vision and leadership. Um, you brought to the table the um, revitalisation of the jetty to the conversation, and that developed, and that's where we ended up with that um, uh, temporary but really good revision of the jetty so we can get the boats down to the garden, which I think is awesome. Um, I, uh, the C, D and E, there's a little bit of nonsense going on around this, if, in, if you excuse me saying so, because all that was was for the, the River Task Plan Task Force to bring recommendations to the LTP for consideration. It didn't preclude any work further south on the river. It didn't preclude other aspects of the river plan being considered. It's, it was a first cut recommendation We've got to be flexible, we've got to be adaptable, we do have to cut our coat according to the cloth, we know we've got a limited amount of money. But at the end of the day, we do need to show some positive steps forward, some leadership and vision for the city, because they did show a huge amount of support in the river plan, in the concept of it. And now they're looking at the council to do something with the concept, not just have lots of concepts, but to actually do something. And when I um, uh, went to those task force meetings, um, I was, uh, like Ziggy, excited to see that in a short period of time we could build on some of the things that were already going on in the CBD, Victoria on the River, Embassy Park, potentially with you know their further stages to connect to the river, and, and the museum. And I'm aware, like you all are, that the museum has its own plan for development. And if we can integrate that plan, all the better. If we can get a win for the museum and a win for the river plan at the same time, that makes absolute sense to me. Why would you do these things separately in isolation? So that, that sold me on that idea. I'd like to explore cycle facilities down there too, which is something that Tiawa has been discussing with us and quite keen to pursue with us. We can't go forward in good faith with funders, including Donny or the Momentum Foundation who are speaking for them, if we don't do something. And that's why I n never saw the complete distinction that other people did with the task force group. Uh, we shouldn't touch any consideration about the LTP. We sure should. We should be starting to create a picture of what's going forward so that we can actually have really positive and meaningful conversations with potential funders. Some that are already here with us wanting to know what we're doing so they can bring their money and funders who haven't yet seen what we're going to do but might bring money. This is about vision and leadership and it, you know you can't get partners in a wishy-washy world. You've got to give them something that they also can be excited about and they want to put their money and their energy and their enthusiasm. Let's build on what's good about Victoria and the River. Let's build on the fantastic work of Embassy Park. We've got a fantastic museum that should be connected and facing to the river. I mean, goodness, why, ha why doesn't our museum open up to the river? It's, to me, that's just plain silly. And, um, and yes, and then we work from there. We do go down, we go more south. We do consider the playground. We do consider the ferry bank and those kind of things. Start somewhere, start strong, start positive. It's a small amount of money. Let's get cracking. Thank you, Councillor Mallet. Thank you very much, uh, and I'll be trying brief as I can. Look, and, and, uh, there are three things that spring to my mind. We're, this is the end, thin end of the wedge. We've lit the fuse. This is mission creep. We are kept <laughs> foot in the door. The, the, no, not cut the mustard. That's not there. This is the camel's nose under the tent. That's five. Okay, <laughs> you keep keep up and take a note of them because make sure I don't use them again because that's called repetition.
Okay. Um, we are committing our ratepayers to a whole lot of un a whole lot of speculative stuff, and it's lovely when people can say the vision and all this, and, and it's stupid that we don't do these things. Those are not arguments. Those are not arguments. Those are uh, 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 those are efforts to try and get you engaged emotionally, and that's a lovely thing when you're taking a girl out for a date. But it's not the sort of thing when you're dealing with other people's money. Okay. And we are doing this. We are doing this all the wrong way round. This is exactly how we got committed into the Claudens event centre. This is exactly how I got committed in the V8s. Someone came with a real flashy presentation and everyone's, wow, wow. And it happened the other day, I don't know if I'm going to talk about this one, about the parking thing in Centre Place. Uh, uh, garden place. We, you guys have got to be rational. You've got to deal with the real world, not this fantasy thing that you're, you, you've got in your mind. Now, we cannot afford this stuff. Andrew was very eloquent. We cannot afford this stuff. All, all the, you, you, you can all claim that you care about our ratepayers and the citizens, but when you start plundering their wages, when you start taking their money that they work really hard for and don't let them make a decision, and this is based on um, a very small amount of uh, you know, public consultation thus far in terms of people knowing what the cost of the stuff was. We're, we're making these decisions uh, before the, um, uh, the community has been advised of the, um, of the cost of these things. We don't have a mandate for this. We don't have a mandate for this. And, um, and, and God bless the, uh, uh, the uh, Momentum Trust and that sort of stuff. We, I really appreciate what they're doing, but we need to be careful we don't get led by the nose by those guys. We've got to show in governance, okay? They are not the people who are elected to run the city or to, to do the things that the council is supposed to do. They are very generous, kind-hearted people, but we've got to be careful. We can't get, um, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it? Addicted to their money or other people's third-party third money. So I obviously will be voting against this. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. So now we're on to right of reply. Thank you, and I've made some former friends and some new best friends in this debate. They're very interesting. And uh, I just want to, if I may, a uh, simple question. Question, do you believe uh, in the river plan or not and the vision contained in that plan? 30 years ago, we could have had the same debates uh, around whether the council progresses the development of the Hamilton Gardens or the development of new walkways uh, along, the Hamil along the Waikato River. Because what I want to stress, this is not some brand new event. Over the last 30, 40 years, previous councils in the community have spent on developing the river walkway network. Quite spectacular projects if you start looking at them. They have uh, worked with the community and funders to develop the world-renowned Hamilton Gardens. Our competitor cities, Auckland, Tauranga, particularly, Rotorua, with respect, I don't necessarily think of having these kind of debates, how they develop their waterfronts and their downtown CBD areas. If we look at a current good news, is the current development of the Victoria on the River site, which is a partnership basically between the private sector and the council. This river plan, I'm very clear, is going to be a good partnership between the commercial private sector, the philanthropic sector, uh, and this council. Uh, the debate is, of course, um, what is the best means by which we can have a river plan that informs the long-term plan, the 10-year plan, that goes out to public consultation in terms of specific projects. And obviously, this council will have real interest in the micro-detail of potential projects in year two and three of its three-year term, all right? So I anticipate that the task force will be wanting to show to you as part of a long-term plan, a 10-year plan, uh, projects, the micro details of projects uh, in year two and three, and how those particular projects as part of a long-term plan vision may attract external funding and also commercial partnerships. Now, don't get me wrong, this task force needs to be open, transparent, needs to be clear what it's doing, but there are moments of discrete delicate commercial negotiation with other interests to achieve an objective. And certainly when you go out with your long-term plan, your 10-year LTP to public consultation, the public has a right to know some micro-detail of what you're proposing. And it may very well be 
that number one, uh, a number of these projects that are put up through the task force don't make the cut because there's other competing visions, other competing projects through the LTP. It may very well be that the task force might recommend projects one, two, three, and four, and they don't, all of them don't make the 10-year plan debate. It may very well be, by the way, that we actually get negative public feedback because the LTP is a democratic process where we genuinely engage our public and some of it doesn't uh, sit on the table. I hope that is not the case and I hope that this council sensibly, pragmatically, financially responsibly carries on the vision that actually was started with, with Ross Jansen and Margaret Evans, given a huge boost by the Julie Hardacre, and I hope that this council will be remembered as a council that uh, contributed to revitalising and developing our wonderful CBD and waterfront uh, precinct along the entireties of the Waikato River. Will we achieve everything in two or three years? Will we achieve everything in 10 years? Absolutely not. But I'll tell you this, if you stay still, have a look at Taronga. They're not going to stay still. Rotorua's not going to stay still. Auckland's not going to stay still. And what is the kind of place that people want to live to, invest their money and move and work and play in, etc.? That is a city that has a vitality about it. And I'm going to argue that the river plan is going to be very much a part of that vitality. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're going to go to the vote for A and B because we agreed that we would take it in part. So we're just voting, councillors, on A. Sorry, we're voting on the amendment. No, he, you with, oh, we, oh, we are. You are. Sorry. You, you put it back on, didn't you? Okay, so we're voting on the amendment. So if we vote, hang on, can I just have clarity? If I vote for this, does that mean the substantive doesn't come? Or the second vote? Right, that sorry. So just be careful, councillors. If you vote for, if you support this and you support the additional. Pardon? I'm not guiding you. I'm just, just clarifying that if you vote for this and you also want to support the second half of the motion, you need to think about where you cast your vote. It's not guidance. You can do what you like. Okay. Ex except the chair, which I am, which is quite good, really, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Hang on, C Councillor Casson, have you, what have you done? Okay, so we're doing that again. Councillors, do it again, please. Yeah. <laughs> Councillor, Councillor Pascoe, press. It'll come, it'll come up seven one. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, all those. Oh, it's come here, come. There you go. Okay, so now we go back to the motion, the substantive motion. Uh, the second, uh, which is the whole lot, the whole suite. Just so, okay, let's go. The motion is carried. Eight, four, four against. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, councillors. Now, just bear with me for a second. We were going to have a briefing. And we're not, I know. Oh, I, I've, already, I've already made that executive decision. So there will be no briefing, because I'd rather do a briefing properly than to do it in a rush. So you are free. Be free. <laughs>